Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose, Seth, Seth Rukai. I I have too many fucking names. Um, I just want to remind everyone at the top of this to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe on all the socials, whether that's YouTube, our Twitter, our Twitter pages, and our Twitch. If you go to Game Session Pod, at Game Session Pod on Twitter, you can find a link tree with links to everybody's socials. And... Uh, yeah, today we're joined again by Sarah, Mesa, and Corey. So, how's everyone doing today? Doing dandy. Yeah. All right. Tired. <laughs> yeah, I'm so th- tired. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. I think that seems to be the consensus so far. <laughs> <laughs> Just sleepy. All right, so today we're going to be focusing on what we've been up to gaming-wise, our top games of the last decade, as well as uh, covering some of our gaming news. But unlike last time, we're going to try to stick to our uh, our time limit of two hours. So if we get to that point and we happen to be at like midway through something where we didn't hit a new story, we gotta we gotta end it because three and a half hours is a bit too long. <laughs> For sure. Too long. So uh, I'm actually going to toss it over to the the revived Mesa. Pun- punished hmm. Mesa now has a webcam that, that's working. We can see his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait. So wait. What, what are we doing first? Just what we've been playing. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to toss it over to you. What have you? What have you been playing? Um, I've only really been having the time to play two games. Very disparate games. Uh, the Mario uh, 3D All Stars Collection and. Uh, Marvel's Avengers on PS4. How's Mario Very... going for you? Because I think basically all of us have been playing that also. I have actually it... haven't been, so I'd like to hear if it's worth Shame it. Shame on you. Nintendo needs that money. They're, they're doing poor. <laughs> they don't have any money right now. You have to get Mario before he disappears from the Earth on March 30th. <laughs> In the, into the Nintendo vault forever. He's never coming back. Can we, can we just all agree it's pretty stupid that that's only a limited availability thing, even it's, for digital? Yeah. Absolutely dumb. Absolutely. But you know Terrible. what? It, it, it fucking worked because it made us buy it. Yeah, I it mean, made me buy a physical version of it. So. To be fair, I would have bought it regardless, so it didn't work on me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how, how far have you gotten into uh, All-Stars? I think you mentioned that you're kind of jumping between them versus um, yeah. just doing one at a time. Yeah, they're disparate, but I remember them well enough that I, I like their differences. So I'm about um, 30 stars into, or no, like 25 stars into Mario 64, like 45, 50 stars into Sunshine, and like 30 into Galaxy. Is there anything in particular that's maybe standing out as whether great or still holds up, or maybe some frustrations? Um, so, I mean, so far, you know, Mario controls like a dream still. Even Mario 64, he, like, you can just do what you want. I don't know how I feel about that one. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh? Yeah, go, I don't go know. Ahead, go ahead and jump on in, Sarah. Elaborate. 64 feels like I'm on an endless slippery slope, literally. There like, is there is a I'm level where you're on a slippery slope. From such unfair, like, oh, you didn't lift your finger off of the, uh... Off of the nub in the last second, so there he goes, and I'm just like ready to just like rip my switch in half. Yeah, let me let me tell uh, you, there was there was a star uh, in the in the lava level last night that I was trying to get inside of the volcano. Oh no! And it was the one where you go on the elevator. Oh my fucking god! I, I, I know what you're talking about. I fall. I fell so many times, and. My boyfriend was literally sitting next to me, watching me do this the whole time, egging me on and making me more angry. Oh, well, that's even worse. And I just, <laughs> when I finally got it, I just looked at him and didn't say a damn word. I just like. <laughs> For what it's worth, Corey, I was in the exact same star and um, I, I literally fell on the last step right before it. So I had to do the whole fucking thing over. I'm like, it- really? At the last possible second, I fuck up? <laughs> Exactly, and it's like it's like like what Sarah just said. It's it's literally like you're constantly on like this little slippery slope, and you're just you're sliding around. And Mario doesn't want to just stay in place. I don't know. It's I I, oh, I you I, have one finger twitch. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah. 
I think some of the levels stand the test of time better than others, but there, there's some, like, really cryptic stars that somehow I figured out as a kid, like, oh yeah, just launch yourself at the corner of the of this wall and a star appears. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the fuck yeah, I knew I it, but I knew it. I would never figure that out if I had, like, not Googled it. I was just like, wait, what do I have to do? It's like, oh, this one tiny pixeled corner. Make sure you hit that exact spot! And I'm just like, but how does anyone figure this I, out? I remember accidentally coming across that star. I think it was just because I was bored out of my mind as a kid. I'm just like, I don't know, what would happen if I launched Mario against a wall? That'd be funny. <laughs> and then they were counting on that. They were counting on that. I, I think it still holds up in, like, in terms of exploration, but I think a lot of it's just kind of built on the gimmick of, here's the first 3D Mario game. He, just fuck around with all these things that weren't possible before, and that mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily hold up as much. But, exactly. uh... You have any more thoughts on it, Mesa? Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, Mario 64. I'm I'm still having a good time. Mario 64. Mario Sunshine, I think, is a very good game. However, me personally, oh, it's ouch. the Ooh. lowest. It, it has the lowest points of all the 3D Mario games. I will agree with that. I the 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 the, the, the hotel level, the, the the every single shine in the hotel level can just. Can just just leave. I am, <laughs> that that I hate. I hate every time I have to go there. Um, though as the as level result, some shines are easier than I was expecting. I think the level design as a whole is just some of it's just like kind of poor level design, and then the rest is um, it's just dickheadishness. Like I remember there's uh, there's a challenge map you have to go to with with where the uh, Pinata or uh, uh, am I saying that right? Pinata. Piantas. Piantas. Um, you just have to walk up to random ones, and they chuck you, and just, like, two out of the three are just going to chuck you into the void. It's just like, well, I didn't fuck up. That was just chance. Yeah. And then there, there's, like, the notorious fucking Pachinko one where the physics just mm -hmm. don't work. Yeah. And it just lacks a lot of polish. I do like fucking around mm -hmm. with Flood, but I haven't I haven't touched uh, Sunshine yet. This is all just based off of uh, PTSD those, memory and a maybe a little bit of Stockholm Syndrome. Those I'm are just like, correct. oh, yeah. Like the like the, the, the animation of Shadow Mario taking flood is just gonna stick with me for the rest of my life. I think. <laughs> I th I think it's I think it's gonna be weird for me jumping over to Sunshine when I eventually do because the way that sixty four is designed is you can tackle any star in whatever order. So I I think what do you need seventy in order to beat Bowser at the end? Yeah, out, like that, yeah. Out of a possible one twenty, so you can like skip entire worlds. As long as you get more stars than the other ones, so you don't have to do like objectives you don't really feel like doing. But Sunshine, you have to get to a certain point in each um, in each uh, world that you that you beat Shadow Mario, and then you unlock the final the final boss. Yeah. Which surprise, surprise is Bowser, giant Bowser is just chilling in a hot tub. <laughs> and um... as all final bosses should be. And so Galaxy. Um, so far, Galaxy is pretty much as I remembered it. Uh, Mario Galaxy One is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, it's still yeah, so it's, weird. It's that's really good, honestly. One of the handful of games I've a hundred percented. I I got every single star as Mario and Luigi. I'm not doing that this time. <laughs> it's um, so weird that uh, two isn't in there. Is a part of the collection, there, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, and that got the two got a lot of rave reviews back when it came two's out. Two's fantastic. Two's mm -hmm. two's just as good if not a little bit better than one for sure I'm, yeah. yeah i'm liking yeah, it, was, it though it and then you you've you've also been playing uh avengers right i, I think you yeah. might be the only one here that's played it probably yeah i'm gonna guess um, yeah I, I, yeah i i thought about it but uh i don't know i was on the fence i was too on the fence about it my backlog's <laughs> too big to justify it i'm like Fuck, right dude. <laughs> that mm. too that too <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky. I was lucky enough to be uh, to get into a play test for it. So um, mm. can you confirm or deny that? Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, an alleged <laughs> play test. An alleged play test, rather. Um, um, but um, I I I think the game is pretty fun. Um, uh, I think probably the weakest part about the game is the intro, actually, and like the part that the beta specific. Not only was the beta a bad beta of the game, but also that part of the game is also a bad vertical slice. Um, a lot of that game, a lot of the, the, the fun and the nuance of each character comes 
like after you've played them for a few missions and you've leveled them up a bit and you can start uh differentiating how exactly you want to play them uh so you, like, you might you play a support iron man or a attack hulk or something yeah from what i've hulk. heard at least each character is uh pretty unique in the way they play and uh, I think I think two of the bigger takeaways that I, that it seems like you disagree with it's um, people seem to not like Iron Man whatsoever. Like they say he's a bit of a glass cannon, a bit clunky of control. And then they also said I think s similar things about the Hulk, where he just wasn't fun to control. Uh, so the Hulk, so the Hulk is a tank. The Hulk is a tank. He literally has aggro moves to 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 make enemies look at him. And a um, and super armor that that that, that uh, heals him every time he does damage. So, um, um, you know, you know, that's that's fun, but like not everyone. That's not fun for everyone. Like, right. I'm not really that big of a fan of the Hulk, but I have a friend that that, that loves playing him. In terms of the, the the criticism for Iron Man, I'm not really sure where that's coming from. Um, I feel like he Iron Man's very easy to control. Uh, probably my favorite to play as just because you just have so many so many options you can like shoot missiles shoot lasers you can do a whole lot um uh, so the 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 i think the 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 multiplayer aspect of the game is probably the most fun of it um because like it does a lot for me for like like you and three of your friends are all going to a location and it's you know hulk and thor it was like iron man and thor flying in the air and Hulk's jumping, and like, it, it just it, it it gets those like comic book feelings all, all fluttering up. I think it's pretty cool that um I, I don't know too much about like the overarching story, but one of the big bigger things that come out of the discourse for it at least was they didn't really advertise um, Miss Marvel or uh, Kamala Khan too much. Mm -hmm. But that seems to be like the big takeaway. Like that story is actually really freaking good, and they nailed that character. Yeah. But they didn't yeah. advertise here whatsoever. Even though, yeah, um, they, they, yeah, um, I think that uh, she is, she's, she's, she's very well represented in the game, um, as well as like you know the fact that, hey, the the, the bad guy's Modok, you know, like there's, there's some fun uh, Marvel nods in there, especially for. Um, future characters that are coming to the game uh, they've confirmed that all future updates all future character updates will be free so, except for spider-man if you're on xbox or pc well yeah but i mean you're just not getting them <laughs> no hope the of reason that. why i picked ps4 <laughs> i was thinking about getting on pc but i'm just like fuck spider-man or 60 fps shit well, well i mean and also it's gonna be a good game to have uh, day one on my PS5. Since, That's true. Uh, there is a free upgrade to PS5 when when the, when it comes out. Okay. I do. And... I do want to know. I've heard that it it sort of has like a Destiny feel to it, and I'm a big Destiny person. But it's like it's those things where it's those games like Destiny. I can only play like one at a time, or else I get like mm. overwhelmed. So yeah. it's like I'm a I'm playing Destiny like I'm playing Destiny two on and off currently waiting for the next expansion to come out and that's the only thing that stopped me from playing Avengers is I don't think I can handle like yeah that thing and, at the same time and another problem with it too at least to me is like it is a little bit Destiny ish but and then the problem is that now you have five characters that are a little bit Destiny ish so like I I like playing Iron Man I'm gonna keep playing Iron Man my Captain America is being left behind. You know, now I have right. to switch to Captain America in order to keep him up, because I do oh, like Captain okay. America. But yeah, and okay, I yeah, that, I'm not a fan of love that life. aspect. Is is, yeah. is 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 not is not the best. But because I tend to stick to one character whenever mm. I play something like that. Like in Destiny, I've had 400 hours in my Warlock, but just in my Warlock, like my Titan mm. and, and my Hunter are just kind of there. Like I'm like, oh no, this is the character, so I'm scared if I play Avengers, I'm gonna yeah. like try to bane. Uh, K uh, K Kamala, and like not touch anybody else. Yeah, so I don't I care about. I only really care about this character that I'm maining that I'm playing as. Even when it comes to MMOs, I feel because I, the last character I did for the last expansion was a Fury War. I'm just like, well, fuck, I I haven't touched like the um the past expansions like the last two or three, 
So I'm like, fuck, there's all these characters with all their nuances and skills and rotations or whatever, and I'm just playing a warrior. I'm missing out on so much by only playing one, but I, just, I barely have the time for the one person. It, it's hard to have more than one character. Yeah, in the two hours a month that I play 14, um, you know, I only play a white mage. I don't, I don't, I don't touch anything else. You're a god so, yeah, amongst I men. <laughs> Healers need more appreciation. Uh, Corey, what have you been up to? I, we went over uh, Mario 64. What else? Do you, what else have you been playing? Um, so I have been playing just like here and there. Uh, I went back to Don't Starve together with uh, with my boyfriend um because when we this is about a little bit of a romantic story here but we uh <laughs> when we started dating uh we played don't starve together uh via like actually online um and then he lost the ability to play it and so we haven't played it for years and i finally got it for like five bucks on my playstation and we've been playing that together so um, there's that. I've been watching him play the new Crash game um, because he's a huge Crash Bandicoot fan. And also, this is the bomb that I told you I was going to drop on you guys. Uh -oh. um, so, uh, two things. My One of my roommates that I live with uh, was a QA tester for that game. Um, uh, may or and, may not confirm to be a QA tester. Allegedly. Say, well, he... he works he, he works for toys for bob um oh, okay. i was gonna yeah. say i'm like you're made out of Kimber, QA for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then and then my boyfriend um was a uh regular tester where he just spent a day testing a few of the levels and stuff like that and uh, both of their names are in the credits so oh nice yeah cool. <laughs> so cool yeah <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, that's, I, that's what I've been up to. And other than Mario, of course, I've been playing the Animal Crossing Halloween update. <laughs> gotta plant I, my pumpkins, man. I gotta get my, my pumpkin patch. <laughs> I haven't touched... I haven't, I, I haven't touched that game in forever. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't touched it whatsoever. I, I don't have it, but... Uh... Like, just even an hour ago, my girlfriend was obsessing over putting pumpkins in, like, every little square inch of her island. Yep, exactly. And they... they I just found out today that they produce uh, three at a time. Uh, the pumpkin pat, the little pumpkin things. They and it could be, most likely, it's going to be orange pumpkins, but there are four different colors. These yeah. different colored pumpkins. Yes, there's white, uh, white, green, yellow, and orange. I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, that's yeah. Well, I learned something new. Fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> Sarah, what have you been up to? Uh, so. I'll touch really quick on uh, me and my co-op partner just started Warhammer Vermintide 2. I think that's the name. It's, it's either Warhammer 2 or Warhammer Vermintide 2. I, don't I think know it's Vermintide 2. But uh, we just started that because it went on Game Pass and him and I co-op stuff. We, we just tried Splinter Cell Kid Fiction. Didn't really work out good. I was not having a fun time. I told you it was hard. Yeah. That shit's we fucked had to, like, up. Drop, yeah. We had to like, drop out of that. I was just like, dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break my Xbox. He's like, let's do something else. <laughs> so, like, okay. so we started Vermintide. It's a lot of fun, just a prettier Love for Dead. I know nothing about Warhammer, so please don't ask me anything about Warhammer. But I'm like, killing Ratman is cool. I can set them on fire. It's you know, you know, it's great. It's got like the like whole loot drop system and oh look at my numbers slowly go up. That's like a thing for me. I'm like all down you, for that. Numbers you, slowly going up. You've been playing as a mage too. That I have I haven't yeah. played it in like over a year, but I remember the mage if you just said it's for like the uh I forget if it's rapid fire or whatever, but but uh, she, she's awesome to play as. Yeah, she's a lot of fun. He's playing as the elf rogue, and he's like, I mean, it's okay as I'm sending things on fire. I'm like, I don't know, I'm I'm having a fun time. But myself personally, uh, started up an old d dating sim that I'm in love with. It's called the uh, Pub Encounters. Just you know, instead of dating anime boys, you're dating middle-aged anime men with grown-up jobs, and just you find them in a bar, and it's great. But the you one can feel I a little bit about, better about yourself. Yeah. Uh, the one I talk about most is I've been playing through World of Warcraft. I mean, obviously, every day it's kind of my thing. But I've been trying to get some old uh, raid mounts and everything. But also just the fact that the new expansion, Shadowlands, supposed to release on the 28th, just got pushed back. Has no release date. Basically said the expansion's done, but 
polishing and end game content needs help. We can have so, a little bit more of a social life for a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer until Shadowlands launches and people around the world take like a week off of work. And never I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll be sure to come around and poke you both with a stick to make sure you're still alive. Uh, I highly doubt <laughs> it. This is, this is the next event ex expansion. So this is supposed to like, this is supposed to have re repercussions in multiple expansions to come. So everyone's been waiting for this for a very long time. Me. Me included, I'm a huge WoW player. Um, I have over 900 hours in a single character. Like, that gets my life. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, and this new expansion is bringing so much new stuff that everyone's like, yeah, I can't wait for the 28th! And then Blizzard comes out, and they're like, hey... I'm yeah. kind of relieved, to be honest. I mean, yeah, they had it so close to the new consoles that I was just like, uh, what are you doing, Blizzard? Like, I like I knew it wouldn't fail. Like, people are going to play it. But, like, the fact that it was so close. How long did they push it back for? Uh, they gave no date. They just said they're... They said there is no date. They have no salad date yet. Like, th like they're not comfortable putting a salad date on it. But mm -hmm. they said uh, it will come out before the end of the year. I'm getting Last of Us 2 flashbacks. Well, uh... <laughs> Like I said, a lot of this is because people in the beta, because there's been a beta going on for the past, like, two, three months, a lot of the beta players have said that the base game is fine. The base game is really good. The stories were really good. Everything that they've been allowed to touch is really good. Mm -hmm. It's just endgame content and the fact that there's not levels on some endgame items and there's some things that are super unbalanced. Like, it's, it's honestly very... What's the word? It's very... Asparent, it's very um, good on like good on them to mm -hmm. to Blizzard because as I was speaking about earlier, a WoW expansion hasn't been delayed since Burning Crusade, and that was more than ten years ago. So mm -hmm. the fact that they're like, we don't, we're not ready to put this out, is pretty a bold fucking move and good on them. But you know, it mm -hmm. still sucks because we've been I, waiting for this for so long. I think it's pretty surprising especially since people are used to patches for an MMO, so I would well, have assumed they would have just released it as is and then do whatever polishing they need to do on the fly. Well, that's what people thought but then when they released the recent um, what was it? The, uh, the press release saying that it was pushed back, they flat out said COVID's a reason why because everybody's working from home, stuff's getting done at like a, at like a shorter rate. So they're like, look, we just didn't have the time to throw this out and then instantly start working on a patch to fix stuff. Right. And Battle for Azeroth kind of happened like that, and not everybody was happy. So I don't think they want to repeat that. Right. <laughs> like, they're, they're, they're betting on Shadowlands to fix stuff. And also, really quick, I am playing Diablo 2. A friend of mine got me to start co oping Diablo 2 with her. I've never played it up to this point. It still holds up 20 years. That's with your character Bone Malone, right? Yes, Blaine, shout out to you, girl. Love you. That is Blaine's necromancer, which is Bones Malone. <laughs> and me, which is just my name, but the game all capitalized it, so it looks like you're screaming my name. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the so we have the adventures of Bones Malone and Sarah, who is a sorceress. So we're just going through and we're like, they keep randomizing every time we start the game back up. So we're like trying to find stuff and like where everything is. And we're like, this is 20 years old, how is this so hard? And then the game just like throws like 50 enemies at you and you just start screaming. It's, you know, it's a lot of fun. It it, it plays pretty damn well on modern hardware. So, I mean, it's Diablo, it's it's fun, so. Nice. All right, I guess uh, moving on to me. Uh, is anyone else here a fan of the Yakuza series? From oh. afar. <laughs> Whoa, thumb from down afar. from Corey? What? Down. Okay, I've, Corey. I've never, I've never been interested in it. Not even in the oh. slightest. So is the thumbs just, down just like neutral, like no interest, or is thumbs down as in like actively? Nah. No, that's just yeah. a, that was just a generic. No. Oh, okay. That wasn't okay, like a okay. bad or anything. I can forgive that. Yeah, no, no, no. Sorry. Uh, I just literally have never had any interest in the game. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I really love the series specifically for its story and its quirkiness and just like its complete anime levels of like just over the top uh, melodramaticness. But like the combat is just like a beat 'em up, and it's just it's really shallow in a lot of the earlier games, and it doesn't necessarily like make giant leaps and bounds improvements in the others. So it, it's entirely the story and just like all the stupid shit you get into that that sells it for me. 
So I've been playing um, Yakuza 5. I'm kind of slowly making my way through because I started with Zero when that came out uh, 2016, I, I want to say. Uh, but yeah. I'm, I'm in Yakuza 5, and it starts off with a main character, uh, Kiryu, uh, hiding out in a smaller town pretending to be a taxi driver. And so I haven't even... For, like, the first, I want to say, like, three three or four nights I'm playing the game, I didn't even touch, like, any of the main story quests. I was literally just grinding out these these taxi missions. And, like, they they all have stories to them. Like, you're, you're driving someone around who you're trying to give them, like, dating advice. There's one lady who has, like, a giant nose hair sticking out. And it's, like, the most over-the-top, like, anime filler episode. Just, like, oh, shit, how do I tell her without, like, offending her? You're, like, doing, like, all these subtle gestures with your mirror, coughing, scratching your nose. And it, it, it's fucking ridiculous. And then um, there's other side quests you have to do at the taxi company where you have to dismantle an entire racing gang by 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 outdrifting them on the freeway. There's like four crime bosses, and there's one above that, and another one above. And it turns out all your coworkers all used to be part of that gang. I'm just like, why is the first eight hours of this Yakuza game that I haven't even touched the main story? Why is this Tokyo Drift two? This would be a complete. This could be its own <laughs> fucking story right here. I'm like, this is fucking amazing, and, and sure enough, I got past that, and now I'm in the main story, and it's still as great as ever. One guy taking on a hundred other uh, Yakuza goons, and uh, they're shooting rocket launchers at you. He just strolls past without a care in the world. I'm like, this is stupid, and I fucking love it. <laughs> so can you confirm that Kiryu is in fact a good boy, because that's all. He's I'm always been a good about. boy. Like, I'm just like, oh, it's all I see in Yakuza. I know Majima, and then Kiryu's a good boy. <laughs> he, he's a good boy. Oh and the, um, the the director of this series, uh, he's even put out just like, yeah, Kiryu's a virgin. He's like a, I think, oh, and, no! I think he's like 56 years old or something. And just like, he, he just has no interest. Like, he'll go to like, a, you, you can make him go to like a cabaret club or whatever, but he'll never actually, you know, like, kiss. Uh, no, I think he's I think he's kissed someone in like Yakuza too, but yeah, con- confirmed virgin. Reminds me of the whole like Dante's a virgin me. It's just so a, is this so is the whole Yakuza series safe to say like basically like uh anime Grand Theft Auto? Yes and no in that you can't drive okay. vehicles. You you can use weapons, but they're limited to like what you pick up from enemies or if you have to pay a lot to get them. But mm-hmm. it's primarily a beat 'em up. Got yeah. it. Okay. One of the and, and one also of the there. So Yeah. A <laughs> like one of the Go ahead, One of the things that makes um, Yakuza so special is that it's all about Kamurocho, which the map pretty much stays exactly the same except for small changes throughout every single game. Mm-hmm. So, the- like, by the time you're at Yakuza 5, you know that place like the back of your hand. You know all the alley names and everything. Like, you don't even mm-hmm. have to look them out. It's like, oh, yeah, I, I remember that place from, like, three games ago. I'll just walk over there. There's, there's some, like, other cities you go to or whatever, but having, like, that constant mm-hmm. uh, hub to go back to, it's... Because, uh, obviously, I didn't play it in the order of release. I'm kind of playing it all within the span of the last four years. But even now, I'm just like, this this feels like a familiar home I, I've gone back to, like, over the last 20 years. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's Yakuza 5. What, what else have I been doing? I've been streaming uh, Dead Space 3, which people who've been watching those kind of know my thoughts on it. It's uh, not no, as good no, as one and two. It's, it's, it's oh, not. It's not. <laughs> it was terrible. EA oh, got in the way. Uh, it's uh, there, there's universal ammo, which kind of disincentivizes you from experimenting with new weapons. So you can just kind of like make an well, Uber weapon and stick with it the whole time. If you want a rocket launcher in in your survival horror game. Well, also they literally shot themselves in the foot when they made it like not optional to experience the game in its entirety without having to do co-op. Um, it, it's 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 a weird case because you can look at games like Resident Evil 5 and 6 where if you're not playing with a co-op partner, the AI just takes over. Yeah, and, and, exactly. and, they're still, and they're still your buddy. They're talking to you the whole time. The story actually revolves around you. Mm-hmm. In, in Dead Space 3's case, it's... Um, they're if, like, if they're not even there, basically. Yeah, they, they just disappear, then they just randomly pop up for, like, very specific cutscenes that happen, like, at, like, the 70% mark of the story. And so, like, you'll get into, like, a boss encounter, and it turns out, like, oh, yeah, you have to jump on a turret. You go in the room, There's there happens to be two turrets. You're like, why is there two? And you're like, 
oh yeah, this is supposed to be a co-op game, and they didn't take out the second turret for this. So it's it's constantly yeah. reminding you, like, hey, you should be playing this co-op. Yeah, it, it's, it's just it reminds a me of Ada's section in Resident Evil Six, when like when in the other sections they have like established characters. So like in Leon, you have Helena and Jake, you have Sherry. Well, in Ada, you have just some random military man. Who just has no name and he doesn't speak and he's just yeah. there so when you're co-oping it you just are playing as a random military man or when you're not co-oping it it's like he's never there right mm -hmm. it's like oh we're it's just this random military man who popped out of no nowhere except if you're playing as ada then you're just by yourself mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and the tone is just like so over the place they take um one of the main characters from two and they just like reduce her to like the um it's like the absolute bare bones of a, of a like a love triangle interest, and it's just like it's it's the most uninteresting thing they could have done in the universe, and like the plot is, I I don't even want to get into it. It's, it's just piss poor. <laughs> I don't care about. It. It's not even dumb in a good way. I'm just like, really, you thought this was a good idea? It's I, it's it's like at this point, it's not even worth mentioning because it's like almost a ten year old game. <laughs> you know? I think it came out like 2013. <laughs> Came yeah, out the same year as oh. The Last of Us. So it's actually my my mistake. Then it's actually like a, a almost an eight year old game. Uh, it's I I love Dead Space one. I love Dead Space two. Probably probably the most out of all of them, just because it's like the right balance of horror and action. But Dead Space three is just fucking all over the place. It, it's slightly better than I remember in the gameplay department, at least once you get past like the halfway mark. But it's uh, it's not great. For sure. Uh, one game I have been enjoying playing, though, it's uh, I've been playing Among Us kind of off and on with the uh, SDGC community. And I've learned, and this is an issue I have in real life, I can't convince people for jack shit that I'm innocent when I'm actually innocent. <laughs> if, if I'm the imposter, I can convince people that I'm innocent. Like, there's no tomorrow. But Dude, when, yeah. when I'm yeah. innocent, I just run my mouth and just like, fuck, now, they, the now I'm suspicious. The point with that game is like literally if you even if you ha were were doing something and you are innocent if nobody else vouches for you you're SOL. You're just you have to be around other people. <laughs> yeah. Like like my strategy has been um just I, I try to stick to other people without trying to seem like I'm trying to kill them cuz I just want to witness yeah. to like to like protect me so like no one comes after me to kill me. But uh, there, there's certain people who I will not name, <coughs> Bronson, um, who are like very good at it, and so uh, Bronson's, what, Bronson's too good. Bronson what, what, was the one who actually taught me how to how to play it. I was in the group when he was like teaching people how to play it, and I never felt more anxiety playing any horror game, not even playing The Last of Us Two, than I felt playing. <laughs> it's so much pressure to be an imposter. Out of the corner at any moment, and I'm just like, no, please don't, no. please don't. No. And, yeah. then I and see, and that's like, that's why the strategy to uh, kill he who must not be named. Um, so he, he's really good at like analyzing like every single logistical point of like who could have done this, where was everybody. So we've just been killing him off first. Just just get out of the way. We Great. call it chaos around when Bronson's not in there. Great. <laughs> have you had a chance to touch it all, Mesa? Me, I I just haven't. I just really haven't had the um, the interest in it. Um, it's just me being dumb and also just like because um you know current time restrictions in my life i just don't feel comfortable um uh dedicating certain time to a multiplayer game for what for it's sure. worth it gives you very severe trust issues <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. just look at everyone like how could you lie to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right i already got them <laughs> All right, moving on. Let, let's do roulette with who's going to go. I, I'm not going to vote for myself. I'm not going to pull a Jim Helpert over here. Uh, da, 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 da. Corey, so, top top four games of the last decade for you. Okay. Um, and this actually, Make us cry. Well, this also, this also touches on the question that uh, Eternal Dragon asked into the chat. Um, so my top four of the last decade are Death Stranding, Resident Evil 7, The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and last is Bloodborne. I think you got some solid picks on there, especially yeah, with Bloodborne. Yeah. I would Yeah. Um, oh, I would, I'm sorry, good. 
Oh no, go 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 ahead. Oh, I was just going to say I was going to put Bloodborne on mine, but it was it was it was between that and Sekiro. I I kind of hold them in the same regard. Mm -hmm. Maybe Sekiro more for gameplay versus Bloodborne's atmosphere. Exactly, and I feel like I feel like Sekiro rewards you for being um for being for having fast reflexes, um whereas uh, Bloodborne rewards you for being aggressive. Mm hmm. Um, and they're kind of opposites, even in the uh, defense game, where Bloodborne is all dodge and you can't block, whereas Sekiro is all about parrying. Like, like blocking is not good enough. You have mm -hmm. to get that timing down if you're going to make it anywhere. Right. And um, if I wanted to, uh, I wanted to touch on Death Stranding a little bit because that's still a pretty hot game, even though it came out er much earlier this year. Um, a hot game with a hot star. Exactly. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, basically, no. Like I had told you guys uh, the other day that um, that game really, uh, I don't know. It spoke to me in so many different ways. And Jose, uh, you'll understand this because we were in the same film film program together. Um, <laughs> and it, it spoke to me as like a, as like a filmmaker or some, a lover of films, you know, it was so cinematic and beautiful and, and just the constant overcasty rainy atmosphere really spoke to like my, my, teenage Corey edgy nature of like listening to breaking benjamin and avenge sevenfold <laughs> walking home in the rain those, ban those bands are still great <laughs> those are still great bands yeah so it's here. like you know i just that game had such brilliant storytelling and the mechanics were just out of this world and you know i try to see the other side of it where people are hating on it but at the same time pe there are people that are hating on it for immature reasons and I, 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 I have to agree on the mechanic <laughs> side I will also add to that I mean I'll talk more when I go through my list spoiler alert it's on my list too it's just the mechanics seem so kind of like not really intuitive at first like oh you need to hold down the two buttons to keep to keep your balance but then you actually do it and you're like oh this is like second nature now like this isn't like as hard as people like oh it's so annoying you have to do this once you do it for like an hour, you just start doing it out of like, what? What's the word? Like, uh, muscle. Memory. It's, it's muscle memory, yeah. Like for it, me, it was. It was it super was, it, intuitive to me. <laughs> like, I think it was just such a breath of fresh air that it's a game that you're just not constantly killing people. Like at first, I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh really? Is this all about walking? But it, it just clicked to me. Just like this is really relaxing. I'm having a lot of fun just doing this. Yeah. I think that's the criticism that I that I I really didn't validate at all is oh you're playing a walking simulator like no it's oh, yeah, it's no, it's a lot yeah. more than that it's you know it's also being slightly paranoid every time rain starts happening mm -hmm. and then finding ways to like go around <laughs> I, I was go around in... BT territory as the like cute little hand just goes like goodbye. <laughs> I'm just like I'm not dealing with this shit right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I was bouncing between when I was playing. I was bouncing between it and um, and uh, 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 the what's the motorcycle uh, zombie game again? Death. Uh, oh, Days Gone. Days yes. Gone. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And every time it rained in Days Gone, my heart stopped. Just like fear. <laughs> 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 You're like, Honestly, nobody move. Even, don't talk. <laughs> even when it rained, like in real life, I fucking would get that slight tense. I'm just how, like <laughs> how scared were you the first time that freaking mini squid whale thing popped out well i, I killed went, it the first time I, I didn't have anything the first time i, I was just I like what it. the fuck is like, going on I, 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 <laughs> I just the set pieces like the the um the, the fight where there's like a giant one flying above you and then the, and you're going through the whole ocean it i it think it's just I so was... fucking cool I think I was more confused than anything. I didn't exactly know what I was fighting and how I was supposed to fight it. <laughs> yeah. Like, Look at that whale. Look at that. <laughs> I'm like, what is coming out of this like abysmal goo? <laughs> like, there it goes. I'm also a big proponent of just running away. So most of those boss fights, I just ran away. <laughs> oh yeah. See, I started uh, doing that, and then and then a part of me was like, man the fuck up, Norman Reedus. <laughs> I just like got like all the grenades I could carry, and I was just like, let's go. I, like, I quickly got, got caught, 
actually like I actually liked fighting the uh, human enemies because I think I I just used the I didn't use any of the the rifles or like the deadly weapons I used like the uh, the little bullet launcher where it, like ties them up and just like getting that like around their head was like super satisfying I'm just like I got you but you're not dead because killing See, people's really I bad in this world from from the human enemies just because I was just my mindset was like I, I, I gotta protect my child <laughs> There was a part of me, there was a part of me in that game where I was like, when it showed like the, the oceans of, of like black, you know, whatever, do, whatever. Do, I don't even know what to call it. Uh, I was just like, a part of me was like, oh wow, Super Mario Sunshine 2 looks great. Like <laughs> <laughs> Norman Reedus pulls out his flood. Yeah. No, no, no. The flood is, the flood is the child. Oh no. <laughs> the flood is the child. I will pay someone to Photoshop the his blood flood. So yeah, so that's my those are my top four. <laughs> I, I don't. Th oh, uh, what else did you have? You had Death Stranding, Resident um, Evil Seven, uh, which I like that. Book. Arguably reinvented and revitalized the entire series. I think that was. I I will defend six as I'm sure Sarah and Mesa will also back me up on. I will not. I will not defend it's six. Not. Yes, it's a fun. It is a fun game, <laughs> but it is not a fun words and evil game. Awful. It is as awful as a B-rated action movie. That, that's like. exactly what it <laughs> was meant to do. I like my action Resident Evil. I like my survival horror Resident Evil. I'm saying. But it, it definitely <laughs> brought the series back into like its critically, highly critically regarded uh, territory. Dude, yeah, I was like at the beginning of that game when you hear a knocking on the basement door and I'm you have to go open the door and nothing happens until you go down the stairs. I wasn't about I played that part in VR by the way and oh, I nearly no. shit my pants. I just <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. So <laughs> It was just it was so it's also kind of refreshing having it in first person because the only first person Re Resident Evil up to that date was uh, Survivor, which is not a good game. No. But uh, I'm actually really interested for 8 to uh, to continue they've, the first person. They've really been hitting it out of the park lately. Resident Evil 3, the remake, was... was it was okay. It was okay. I, I think it could have been more, and I was hoping for more because I was a huge fan of the, the original Resident Evil 3. Um... And they really skipped over a lot of things in that game. It was kind of disappointing, but, uh, you know, it is what it is, and I am looking forward to RE8. Um, but the last game on my list is uh, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Do I really need to say anything else? Like, <laughs> uh, at first, it didn't click with me. It took me, like, halfway through my playthrough. I'm just like, oh, yeah, everything about this is fucking beautiful. I love it. Can't. It's... Uh-oh. I... I played uh -oh. like four hours of it, and I just, I, 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 I hated it. I just, I was Whoa. not having fun. No, Sarah. It gets so good. I hate weapon degradation. Is I'm like with you there. I'm with you there. fucking, like, worst thing to me. But and like, that literally you, ruined it to me. I think it makes sense. You, like once a, you, like, once you realize the balance in the degradation, and you realize... Don't worry about it. Just throw it. It's fine. No, you'll get like, more you, stuff. You'll get another one. <laughs> you'll it's get another. I just couldn't do it. Just I found toss it. Boring. Like my favorite Zelda <laughs> is Twilight Princess, and I go on and on about Twilight Princess. I think it's oh, beautiful. I, I think it's, 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 it is a beautiful thought. game. Wait, wait. Where did you just I, like re? Did you say your favorite is Twilight Princess and not Wind Waker? Yes, my favorite is Twilight Princess. Fight me. I love Twilight Princess. Bro. But uh, it's just like, yeah. I tried. I tried Breath. Breath of the Wild. Like, I gave it a shot. Like, I normally, I give up. I don't like a game that fast, but I did, like, four and a half hours. That's fair. I was fair. like, I'm going to try to like this. I'm going to do my best oh. to like this. And just the whole time, it never clicked. Like, it just would not work for me. And I'm like, I just can't do it. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? It's fine. I got shamed by all my coworkers at the time. <laughs> I got like, the hours I for you. I right? I did, you. too. I literally... Like, I that. It's, Mesa... It's Mesa, did you go through and complete every single dungeon? Yes, I did. Um, Same. I, the only, the only, <laughs> I cannot beat the hardest uh, master master sword quest. No, I didn't even the, try. The, I didn't even try. It's so hard. No. That's, the, that's I've done every single side <laughs> quest. I've done every single shrine. Yep. Um, that 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 is literally the last thing I have on my regular play. Is file. the master sword so quest? Is that one of the DLC ones or is yeah? That... Yeah, the DLC. Master oh, okay. Sword I never, trials. I never touched it. Can, I, not, can I say? Yeah. Can you shout out the worst shrine in that game where you have to follow that fucking Korok through the forest? 
Yes. Oh no, yeah, that I'm one. At like <laughs> 250 hours in the game. Like, Woo! I will say there's nothing the quite like just stumbling across a mountain and then you just look up, there's a giant fucking dragon. And you're like, what the fuck is going Like, there's no precedent for it. It just happens. You're like, <laughs> what, what do I do? Is this a... What? I, I can fly towards it? I will say one thing, one, one major thing that I was disappointed with that game. Um, and it was the fact that they chose to um, forego you having a musical instrument of any kind. Um because ever since, you know, I grew up with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask and, you know, every single Zelda game always had that where you have a musical instrument at your disposal and you, you were your musical songs. Instru- your musical instrument it, is your sword as you create a uh, symphony uh, of death through your enemies. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> at least well it's said. better. <laughs> well, I definitely agree with you, but at least this, at least to me, this is better than having a bad musical instrument. Like in Skyward Sword. I don't, I I don't want to talk Sword. about Skyward Sword. I love Skyward Sword so much, I'll defend it to the ends of the earth. But that harp? Oh, yeah. Like, just Corey, like, I, I, need, I need to rely on you here. What's your favorite Zelda game, Corey? Oh, I, I'm I'm an oldie. I, I freaking will always and forever love Ocarina of Time. It's okay. We can The two of us can still be friends. Okay. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about these other two traders over here. <laughs> Listen, man, I remember Christmas morning waking up and like, being a Twilight Princess, and just like Twilight Princess being like the best thing I had seen at that time. Like it was beautiful. I love Minna. I love Wolf Link a lot. Just it baffles me that Nintendo still has not like re-released that like Wii U re- remaster onto the Switch. Like a part of me is like, what are they doing? Like, literally just poured it up. I will pay $60. Like, I never really say that about my Nintendo games, but I will pay $60 to play Twilight Princess. Mm. <laughs> I, I will say, as realistic as uh, the art style of Twilight Princess is, there's nothing as dope as, uh, as Toon Link just running upside Ganon and stabbing his sword straight through his forehead. <laughs> and yeah, that was, I I was that. acid. <laughs> fighting Twilight Princess just has always stuck in my head. Like, going from, like, fighting possessed Zelda to being on horseback... And then, like, it, it, tricking, yeah. tricking Ganon with your life. It was <laughs> arguably... <laughs> Twilight Princess was arguably the, like, edgy teenager of the Zelda series. Like, <laughs> I was listening to a lot of Linkin so Park, It's so lovable, man. though. It's so lovable. <laughs> like, it's, Midna's probably one of my, like, favorite Zelda characters ever. Like, she's just so cool. And when you see her, like... Her, like, uh, Twilight form, when she's that, like, beautiful, like, dressed in the whole, like, hood and everything, like, I was just, it blew my mind. Yeah. Since, uh, someone in the chat cool. said it, I have a confession to make, I've never played Link to the Past. Oh, man, never. I... I really need to. I've played a little, I've played a little bit of it. I started going through the original, um, through, uh, the Super Nintendo Virtual, I started playing it, um, and then, and then the... What is it? The remake for Link to the Past came out. And uh, no, it, it was a sequel. Or oh, uh, Link, Link se- Between Worlds. I never played that either. Oh, okay. Yeah, I never played that either. But all right, moving on yeah. to Mesa. <laughs> and I just looked at the timer. I'm like, fuck. Okay. What are, <laughs> yes, Mesa. What are your top four? All right, my top four are Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Uh, never heard uh, of it. The Outer Wilds. <laughs> Um, DMC Five hey, hey, and Street hey, Fighter Five, hey, or right, right, Champion Edition. Slight <laughs> spoiler: uh, Corey's the only one that didn't put Devil May Cry Five on their list. So uh, shame hey, on you. It doesn't mean I don't love it. Okay, you guys yeah, told me that it doesn't. Fine. I yeah, you know like, it's just. <laughs> don't worry, I got you. Don't, don't worry. Have death on the list. Anyway, okay. anyway, basically, Nero <laughs> is Bay. Okay, Nero mm. is Bay. Oh, <laughs> right, before we. Uncle Dante, what the hell? I just, uh, before we before we hit uh, DMC Five, I just want to get um, uh, Outer Wilds out the way real quick. Uh, I love Outer Wilds. It's one of my favorite game experiences I've ever had, um, and it's and I always say it's a game that I can't play anymore, not because of like some replay value that I'm looking for, but more uh, more more so the. The game is learning how to play the game. That's 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 what the game is. Whoa. I don't... So once you've learned how to play the game, there you can't learn how to play the game anymore, right. you know? 
Um, I remember hearing something similar for um, what what's the game that Jonathan Blow made where you're on the island just oh, connecting Witness? dots? Yeah, the Witness. There, there's oh, one. I love the Witness. What, once you know the thing at the end, and you know you can yeah, do it literally sure from the very beginning, it, it just kind of breaks it. But um, but yeah, Outer Wilds. I I, I is it I, hard to I, talk I, about I, without spoiling? Because I know it's, it's very story heavy. Yeah, yeah. I would like. I would say just just start it. Um, just keep playing it. Um, it's it's a mystery game. It's a, it's it's a mystery game that helps. Um, once you discover the mystery and, and uncover everything, and the best part is that the, the, the there's like multiple mysteries to uncover, and they all tie into each other, but none of it's mandatory. Okay. Hmm. And there's yeah. like. A, I know there's like like maybe 10 plus endings or maybe even more. No, there's um like I guess there's technically a couple but four or five of them are pretty much the same ending and then there's two real endings. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can't express my love for this game more. And then, you know, Street Fighter 5 um uh, this is the game that brought me into the FGC. Um, you know, I like I like I know words like chicken blocking now because of this game. What the <laughs> fuck is chicken blocking? <laughs> yeah, what or is fuzzies. chicken blocking? Chicken blocking is like um, it's not actually it's not even it's not really in five. It's more of a hyper fighter game um, thing, but it's like um, switching between high and low blocking really quickly. Okay. Um, oh, okay. There's like yeah, footsies, like all these terms that I know now. Uh, I'm just gonna have to take with me for the rest of my life because of this game. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't. I can't express my my love for it and the community I've joined from it enough. Nice, uh, Sarah. You want to go ahead and jump into your list? Yeah. So uh, my list sounds very familiar to other people. Uh, it is Death Stranding, uh, Devil May Cry Five, obviously, uh, Kingdom Hearts Three, and uh, Gears Four. Actually. Actually, and since we both touched on first off, uh, D Devil May Cry Five is the best action game of this decade. Is the best Devil May Cry game, and it is probably the best thing that Capcom has released in. Well, like 2019 was a crazy year for Capcom in general because that's when we got the Resident Evil Two re right. remake and Devil May Cry literally weeks apart. Like people seem to forget this. Like it's literally like, three weeks apart. Capcom's on and fire. They went through a rough patch, but they're back to beat Resident Evil Two. <laughs> I was like, oh god, I gotta beat this before Devil May Cry 5 comes out. <laughs> and I will say that Devil May Cry 5 is the first game, not not counting Kingdom Hearts 2, that I have played more than three times. I literally beat it, then played it again, then played it again, then played it again. Like, I just, like, constantly restarted it. It was the first Devil May Cry game I beat on uh, Dante Must Die. I never beat a oh, Devil May Cry game on that before, but I did. And it was, like, the best experience ever. And I, I went in completely blind. So... Uh, Mesa knows that he will uh, uh, appreciate this, and I mean, I guess spoilers for Devil May Cry 5, I guess. Uh, but just like seeing Virgil and hearing his original voice actor back literally made me lose my shit. First of all, I laughed a bit <laughs> when I first saw his character model. I said, What's up with his chin? and I kind of just started laughing, and his forehead was like really big. So I just kind of <laughs> I just kinda sat there just like cackling, but then I was just like, Oh my god, it's Virgil's original voice actor. And he beat the shit out of Dante in the first, like, five minutes. I'm like, fuck yes, give this to me. Like, just, I, <laughs> I love Devil May Cry and being able to go back to that world and, like, have Nero be cool. Because he was such, like, a twink in DMC4. Just having him be so <laughs> I kind of liked his little emo hair in 4. I, yeah. um, he was fine. I was I was just replaying the Devil May Cry 4 special edition. And I'm like, wow, Nero. Like, the first words out of my mouth were, wow, Nero's a twink. Like, I was just like... <laughs> Ooh, that didn't age good. But just like, <laughs> Devil May Cry 5 was so good, and the combat felt so fucking tight and responsive. And even if I, I will say, I played the game on assist mode because I'm utter garbo at doing combos, and my fingers can't twist that way. But just, <laughs> it, it felt so good to make you feel cool. A, a quick like, little interjection. I, I am, I'm so glad that they decided to just make Devil May Cry 5 linear versus... Uh, going back and exploring areas. I just think as an action game, it's just better suited just point A to B. 
And the way that they did the character switching, when you'd go from Nero to V, to when you unlock Dante and you go back to V, back to Nero, like that was the coolest damn thing ever because it lets you play as each character in a certain amount of time to where I felt like I was good with everybody. Mm-hmm. Like I was I like, s- oh my god, I'm getting triple S's as V, which granted isn't that hard. But v, it felt v is like pretty. V is it. easy mode. Huh? Oh, I said uh, V is easy mode. I, I didn't know, even know what I was yeah. doing, and I was still like, oh wow. And it's just like. I'm gonna and I'm gonna stop talking about Demi Cry Five because I'm gonna start talking about Scrabble and I'm <laughs> just stranding a little bit. I'm sure Corey wants to argue with me about Kingdom Hearts Three. Just uh, I will end with, uh, Dante has been my hus- hus- husband since I was like 13, and I'm just like, thank you. Same. You gave him a facial model who is hot and just, <laughs> amazing and perfect, and he's still trash. And it's just like I'm gonna be here forever. So quick on Death Stranding. Kojima's one of the reasons I went to film school. So being able to play Death, Death Stranding and feel like I was playing an actual, like, movie and just, like, I still go back and watch the final cutscene just from time to time because of just how mind-blowing that cutscene was and confirming, so, I hate to brag, but I but I thought that Mads was Norman Reedus's father from, like, the very beginning. I was like, something's up here. I'm like, something's up. Mads is related to somebody. Like, I was like, Mads is related to somebody. And it's got to be him. So I called that, like, way last year when I was like, wait, hold on. But just, like, when... The thing I always talk about is when Death Stranding clicked, when it clicked for me, when the story clicked, when it fi- when I finally understood why everything was happening, it's my favorite moment in gaming ever. Because it was that that feeling of being like, oh my god, I get it. Agreed. Like, I, yeah. I, I, I legitimately sat down my controller because thankfully it was during a cutscene. I sat down my controller and I was like, I fucking get it. I was like, I understand it. The years of going over trailers and music choices and weird Instagram posts that Kojima made, just being able to sit there and be like, I understand what this game is. Yeah, I was honestly afraid I wasn't going to understand it. Like, I was afraid I would be going into the game and just be like, okay, well, I, I mean, it was at first. I was like, what the hell is this game even about? Like, what, what is it trying to tell me? And then it, it got closer and closer to the end, and everything just started to unravel, and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. my God. It just, was insane. It yeah. Hard. And I get why people don't like it. I understand that. Like, I would be like, if you don't like Death, Death Stranding, I'm going to call you crazy, but I'm also going to understand <laughs> why you don't like it. It's It's 100% the type of game that I totally get why people don't like it. I get if you don't want to play it. But it is it is also 100% the game it's, that you need to try once. It's a niche. It's definitely a niche target mm-hmm. audience that they were appealing to. Um, right. mm-hmm. And then going to the Kingdom Hearts 3 really quick, Corey, I'm sure you, you might say some things to me. So, <laughs> I'm just going to walk away for half an so, hour. So let me... Let me okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Personally, and this is just me, I know it's not the same for every for every other Kingdom Kingdom Hearts fan. I personally think that Kingdom Hearts 3 did way more than it should have to have to wrap up I say wrap up Sora's story. To an extent. I mean obviously Remind came out and we're like, oh fuck, no it didn't. But like <laughs> yeah. I'm going by the base game, not Remind. I'm going by the base game. Mm-hmm. It did what I didn't think Nomura had the literal mental capacity to do, which was wrap up Sora's story in a way where I was 100%. I mean, I cried because obviously, who did it? I I can't hear. Don't don't think twice any anymore without oh. my eyes out. <laughs> but it's just like it. Cl- like he finished Sora's story in a way where 14 year old me never thought was possible. Mm-hmm. Like he did it. He was like, oh my god, Nomura finished a story. Like, Sora's story is done. It's mm-hmm. done. You could argue that Remind even ended it, just in a more longer, like, six-hour way. But, like, it's done. And it's so, it's even so weird for me to say that, like, Sora's story is done. Like, we're not mm-hmm. gonna focus on Sora anymore. Next games might have Sora in them, but he's not the focus any, anymore. And well, I just- thought, I thought Nomura always said that he, that Sora will always be the protagonist. Sora's always going to be the 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 protag, but the games aren't going to focus on him. Right. So like Sora's Sora's just going to be like, what's a good ex- example? Uh, kind of like how Gears Four made you think that JD was the main character when it was really Kate. Mm-hmm. You're looking at 
you were looking at Kate's backstory through JD's perspective, that's what I think the next Kingdom Hearts games are going to be. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, you're going to play Sora still, obviously, but you're going to be looking at other characters and other stories and other things in the Kingdom Hearts universe. You're just, Sora's just there for the ride. Sora's there to yeah. get a huge Halo Joel Osment commentary <laughs> and yell about friendship, and I'm here for it. So, I, I, I'm in pretty much complete agreement with you there. Um, I, I think that Kingdom Hearts 3 wrapped up things pretty well. Um, the the pacing for me was a bit off uh, because I feel like they sort of crammed all of the story of Kingdom Hearts 3 into the last, like, third of the game. Yeah, which um, is why I think Remind is really good because mm -hmm. it's... It, I feel like Remind is how they wanted to explain Kingdom Hearts 3. Mm -hmm. They just... Something happened where they're like, shit, just push it out, but with near... Re right. Remind, and it I, I think it's so just kind of a fun. thing... I think it's just kind of a thing with the series where the story's, like entirely front and back loaded with the middle just kind of entirely being like Pixar worlds with like tiny little story details thrown in or main story but details thrown middle's sprinkled throughout. The middle is almost always the best part of a Kingdom Hearts game because I'm replaying through two on my free time on the X Xbox and just seeing Sora Donald and Goofy and like Pirates of the Caribbean. It's not it's not it's like, Eddie Murphy though. Sora, this is Donald and Goofy as he's and they're talking to like Jack Sparrow and William Turner who are just real humans. Like it's like there's like something so heartwarming about just the middle section of like Kingdom Kingdom Hearts games. Yeah. That's just like, okay, I'm fine with them like cramming the last half uh I say the world that never was also, which is just like all oh, the story of Kingdom Hearts 2. And I will I will say this much as well. I freaking I have a love hate relationship with Nomura for this one singular reason now. And that's the fact that he had to throw in a very like tongue in cheek um joke at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 3 when oh, it shows 2. Sora 2.9 I oh. was like oh <laughs> absolutely fuck off no more like okay. so, that, that, that was great that really quick that was in 2 2.8 when you beat the the like really early Kingdom Hearts 3 section in 2 in 2.8 when you're playing as Aqua and it ends and Sora's like, all right, guys, let's go. And 2.9 showed up on the screen. I legit screeched. Like, I'm like, <laughs> motherfucker. Like, it's just like, you know. You know we've been waiting. Like, yeah. Like, you knew. And it's just like, oh, I hated it. I was so bad. I was right. just like, you do this to us. All right. Any last thoughts on Kingdom Hearts? Just because I know we can fill the, the last hour with it. Uh, I totally understand if Kingdom Hearts fans don't like Kingdom Hearts 3 as much as I do, because I think the one thing I love about the Kingdom Hearts series is fans will openly like talk shit about it and be like, oh, this is terrible, this 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 is not good, but they will all come back around and be like, but Kingdom Hearts 3 is one of the best games, get best game series ever created, and it still holds up. Like, fans, it's the most active fan base where we will talk shit about it, but then also just portray our love for it. For, That's like, part of the this. fun of it. It's because the love and light of friendships brings brings heart together, hearts together, hearts, hearts and darkness. darkness. It's, it's light. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that season one of the boys has Jaylee Holt. J J What's his name? J Haley, 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 Haley Joel Osment. Haley Joel Osment. I got it backwards. Yeah. yeah, I'm very glad he's in season one of the boys, and uh, I can't yeah, he has a very good story, scene. Man, it's so hard. Also, really, really quick, Jose. I promise. Hot's up to him, who still loves playing Sora so much, and just keeps saying, I will come back for Sora whenever they need me, and I'm like, my heart. Yeah. I'm just like, he loves Sora so much, and it makes me want to cry. <laughs> just, it's so cute. Like, I like I love when voice actors love their characters, and Haley Jawsman just loves Sora so much, and it makes That's me awesome. so happy. That's yeah, that makes Qu me happy. Question about one of the games on your list. Why did you choose Gears 4 over Gears 5? Yeah. So I chose Gears 4 if people don't know, obviously I'm I'm Cog Shrimp in in the chat. Gears is one of our, is my next King Hearts is my favorite game series of all time. Uh, I chose Gears 4 because while I love the original trilogy, I I was actually going to put the ultimate edition in Gears 4's place, but 4 just beat it out literally by an inch. Uh, I chose four because, and, uh, 
Rams made this comment yesterday. What did you call it? I said it's the best sea boot they've, uh, that's ever been made. Yeah, and honestly, that's I forget what does true. that mean again. A sequel uh, reboot. Sequel right? reboot. Okay. Yep. Because for me, Gears Four took everything that I loved about the original trilogy and added in, which I know people argue they don't like the new kids. I call them the new kids. People say they don't like uh, uh, JD, Dell, and, and and Kate. I How love that one. How I you know. Hate Del? No. No. <laughs> Dell is good. I don't. I'll like, never I forgive you for that. Kids so much i know that, that they never replace delta but what i love that that the his name's in there it's delta delta because they're because they are their own characters and jd is not marcus he's his own person and kate if you told nine-year-old me a girl would be the main character of gears of war i would have said you're fucking crazy because oh my god i love kate and just everything about gears 4 is just polished and good and it goes back to the game's original sur sur survival horror roots which I, my my dark heart just loves and they they didn't kill marcus they didn't do the thing that we all thought they were going to do and i thought that was so ballsy and keeping him lit like he's i mean spoilers for gears 5 but like marcus is still alive you would think they would have like killed him like, like off and be like i'll see you in heaven dom like no like he's he's still alive and he's still kicking ass and he's just an old grizzled man and still it's planting just, like, tomatoes they planting his tomatoes they are doing they are breaking so many like sequel reboot rules to me and they're doing it in the best way possible and i think that's why i love gears 4 and gears 5 gears 5 also made that too but it, it was i know gears game was going to go there i just didn't know which one but i chose gears gears 4 because just everything about it is so solid and so tight and really good and i don't know like Gear, Gear, gears 4 just feels right it feels right, and if you haven't played Gears 4 yet, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I will say one point before we move on. I think Gears 4 was probably more important to the revitalization of the series, although I would probably personally put 5 over it. Good. I love 5. Uh, I know not a lot of people did. Uh, 5 hurt me mentally and physically, but I was and here for that's it. That's only because you picked the wrong choice. And with that out of the way, we're going to move on to the next topic. Listen, we're, we're, we're not arguing about this. <laughs> we're not arguing. On, on, we're on. moving on. <laughs> now that I've got the final word in, um, I guess I'll move on to my before list. Before I start yelling at you, uh, we've already talked about Devil May Cry Five at length. Um, it's just hands down the best playing action game of all time. Like I don't really know how, how I'll still elaborate. It's like the music, the presentation. It looks fucking insanely good, even on base consoles. That's not even the Pro or the um, I almost said Series X, the Xbox One X. It just looks so fucking good. It, the action's out of the out of this fucking world. Like I don't know how it's still elaborated based off of uh, what we already said. Uh, I played on a Series X. I uh, actually played on the Gears Five Series X because I'm a Garbo oh, adult. Oh, see, you said uh, Series uh, X. And oh my god, it was beautiful. Like just like the cutscenes, just. I felt like I was watching like a CGI. It's a it's the same engine as uh, Resin the latest Resident Evil games, the, the, uh, the RE engine. engine yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's honestly I would argue that Devil May Cry Five does more with the RE engine than Resident Evil does because they somehow made these like cartoony like half half devil man man children look like real people. Yeah, and that was nuts. <laughs> Let's see, um, I think my list might be. I guess Mace has got, not, I wouldn't say a curveball with Outer Wilds, but I, th I think mine's like relatively diverse in a, we in a weird way. Mm -hmm. So I guess like in terms of like just action based, there's Doom Eternal, I think is just the best shooter of the generation hands down. Like it does everything that 2016 Doom does with the uh, glory kills, the fast pace, and no reloading. And it just gives you so many other abilities that you have to, um, that you kind of have to micromanage like on a, on a, on a cooldown rotation. And it just kind of takes that 15 out of 10 and dials it up to like 36 or something. It's just completely fucking insane over the top. And the soundtrack is, uh, I don't need, I, I just want to say zeros and ones because that's what it reads like in a, in a guitar tab. <laughs> um, For real though. <laughs> so I think those two are just hands down, like the, the best examples of what, um, action can be in those respective genres, whether it's, uh, I, w I wouldn't call Devil May Cry a hack and slash, but, you know, a character action platform or whatever mm -hmm. people want to call it. And then Doom's just, like, hands down the best shooter <laughs> of the generation. 
Um, I think, Corey, did, I think you slightly talked about The Last of Us 2 earlier, but... Um, yeah, uh, not not earlier, but like the other day. Um, oh, okay. We were talking about The Last of Us 2, because uh, that's on your list. Yeah, that, that's the third game on my list, and uh, mm-hmm. take anything I say with a uh, grain of salt, uh, Twitch <laughs> chat. But um, yeah, just the, the story hit me really fucking hard. The first game came out at a time where uh, I was going through some stuff, so it just kind of holds a very personal place in my heart. Mm-hmm. And just, I, I don't want to go too into spoilers for anyone in chat, but making you think about things from a different perspective and challenging your uh, preconceptions, I, th- I think just ultimately well, I, paid off. And I think it's the bravest narrative in, in a long time. And I think the people that kind of uh, dismissed it from learning some some spoilers um, did themselves a giant disservice. Yeah, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. I think... Um... I think it, it you're missing an opportunity for emotional growth um if you if you're not saying people aren't allowed to you know uh just dis, not not dismiss a game but like um dissect a game you know and and say anything negative about it they're they're completely allowed and totally you know ob, you know they're they have mm-hmm. an obligation to their opinion but um it the game is definitely an emotionally mature game you have to you have to have some level of adult emotional maturity to really look inside yourself and fully understand both uh, multiple different perspectives. Uh, onto what Corey said, and kind of, and I hate to make a joke of, about this, but I think The Last of Us Two brought out hot take here, fellas. The girls okay. given the hot take here. It brought out a lot of the man children that Bingo. people didn't know yes. really existed. Uh huh. Because I 100% agree with Corey. I just love everything that you just said. It was great. But it, uh, uh, but it's just like another thing about that was just the amount of friends who texted me saying like, oh, I beat the game and I instantly deleted it. I hated it. And I would ask them, why did you hate it? And all of them said the same reason, which we won't say because of spoilers. Mm-hmm. And it took me so hard not to send these people. That's because the game's smarter than you. Yes, that's, that's, that's slam what it, what it dunk. Does. And for, for what it's on. worth, huh? oh, I was going to say, for what it's worth, I have, I'm uh, just finished recording VO for a video on this. I hope will be done by next week. I kind of made the editing pain in the ass. I, 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 I was telling Mesa I should just employ the uh, Review Tech USA method of just toss a random ga- gameplay clip and just let the VO do its work instead of yeah. you know chopping very specific clips for every little sentence yeah but yeah, like, uh, uh, I'll, I'll... so really quick say say what you want about naughty dog as a studio like it's bad crunch is bad 100 percent but Valid. just the fact that they their writers neil and i keep forgetting hallie that. gross ellie thank you those two literally made one of the smartest stories in video games and the most emotionally challenging to understand if that makes sense and Mm. i feel like again brought out a lot of man children why are you getting angry about women's arms that could crush your head like i don't understand on on the plus (laughs) side it lets you know what people you can just completely ignore block but it's but it's also when i beat like the emotional journey that i went through playing the last of us 2 no other game i think will ever replicate that exactly it was mm-hmm. done in a way where I literally went through the five stages of grief in in a matter of like a five hour, six hour video game. Right. And a game I can't, never I can't hear five much. stages of grief without thinking of that fucking uh, giraffe skit from Robot Chicken where he gets stuck in the, uh, what is it, the tar or something? Just, it's just, I'm, it's just, it's so hard, it's so hard not, not to spoil stuff, but it, it just honestly made me sad how many people played The Last of Us 2 and just didn't understand it. Because I feel like that did a huge disservice to the game itself. And I definitely think The Last of Us pushed gaming as a medium that can tell really thought-provoking stories in a way that, I think this is going to sound super cheesy, but in a way where it it basically went out there and said games need to be taken more seriously because we can literally tell stories like this, but then all the, but then all the man baby children come out and they're like, no, oh, we hated it because this is a this and this, and everyone's and 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 it's just like, God, people are really dumb. Mm-hmm. 
hashtag check out my video on it coming out hopefully within the next week where I talk about every little story beat and why uh, misconceptions about I don't even I, I can't mention it <laughs> but yeah we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it there um, moving on to my last game on the list because uh, I know for a damn fact no one else has this on any of their fucking list for like any like top game of the year uh, Danganronpa V3 it's a visual novel slash uh, high school kids killing each other simulator and just so the entire series is so fucking wacky and like the investigations and the debates you have to do in order to convince people who the person is or finding everything out it's just so beautiful and then what V, uh, it's it's just such another story based game. I can't tell, but it is very, um, what's the word I want to use? It, it's a giant meta allegory, and that's what I'll leave it at. So if you liked either the first or the second, I think you owe yourself owe it to yourself to play through it. Just to, I, I can't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I really can't. It, it's the yeah. yeah. It, it would get stuff away, and I feel bad. If anyone wants to do a Danganronpa V3 spoiler cast, I'd be more than happy to. Alright, and you know what? Uh, we are at the hour and 17 minutes and 42 seconds mark, which is slightly better than I thought we were going to do. We might actually be able to get into the news. Woo! News! News! Do, 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 Welcome do, 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 to RNTJWQFL. I hate you for that, Mesa. I know what you're doing. (laughs) 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 All right, let's let's go down the news. Uh, The PS5 SSD drive after the OS and quick resume features is rumored to only have 664 gigabytes of free space. This is after the SSD being stated to have a terabyte. Um,. I well, no, I it's, uh, 860, it's like 868 or something like that, right, for the PS5? I, that's what it's supposed to be after um, typical like OS, but uh, mm. the rumor is with a quick resume, there was a screenshot on uh, Reset Era uh, showing that that's what the, like, out of the box, that's how much actual free space that you'll have. Yeah. Which to me is uh, pretty disheartening given how big games are going to be with Modern Warfare. I think there's a story that came out today, it does not even fit on a 250 gigabyte SSD nowadays. But oh, see, see, that's only the war zone mode, though. Mm-hmm. Like and base I... modern, base modern warfare fits. Right. It's the war zone shit, and people are, of course, this is nothing on you, Jose, but it's just people are like, they're like, oh, Call of Duty doesn't fit anymore. It's literally just the war zone that doesn't fit. Yeah, I, th- I think it's just indicative like, of like how ridiculously sized um, mm-hmm. game sizes are going to be, whether they do compression practices or not. And um, another story under this was Xbox put out, uh, I think it was a little press thing saying, and um, like for Modern Warfare, you could specifically uh, choose what parts of the game to install, whether it's a single player, multiplayer, or Warzone. I think you could already do that. Yeah, it's it's already been a thing, but it's not been. I don't have any Warzone stuff downloading, and I have Modern Warfare. Yeah, I think they're just pushing for it to be more of a widely adopted thing, given the storage concerns that people are having. But it's not like a you know a system mandated thing. It's still on a developer to developer basis. Yeah, I wonder um, how much with like the improved CPUs that both consoles will have, how much that could potentially help with compression. Right. Since you know both consoles are going to have eight core, sixteen threads, Zen two CPUs in them. That's basically the processor I have in my desktop, just like tuned down a little bit. So. But even then, it's um, all everything in that box is proprietary, so they're going to be able to get more juice out of it versus a PC. Yeah. So I wonder if like compression could be better, and they can just decompress it even faster than they've ever have been before with the the speed of the SSDs and the speeds of the processor. Right. I remember uh, Titanfall two specifically on PC. I, for- I forget exactly how big the file size was, but it was gigantic specifically because they didn't compress um, their sound files. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm also not incredibly surprised in this fact that that we are getting a a uh, lower uh, hard drive space um, in general, uh, like at launch, because I feel like that's typically the issue in general. Is like when co- new consoles launch, they have uh, anywhere between 
500 gigs to a terabyte of hard drive space. For, for uh, context, the uh, PS4 and Xbox One both launched with uh, 500 gigs, and then later models moved over to one terabyte. Right, exactly. That was, that Sorry, you all are reminding me I need to check my own Walmart. We, uh... Just that was right. <laughs> Double check that. Is that, is that just that. another way of bragging that you managed to grab one? Those sizes are right before we hit our digital paradigm. Yep. Uh, next story Apex uh, Legends. Not sure if you guys actively played. I'm kind of on and off. I'm. Nope. Sarah's shaking. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Apex is getting crossplay, which is, I think, a trend that just needs to just continue to uh, be perpetuated by different studios. And obviously, Fortnite's kind of been on the. Uh, forefront with that it's on freaking iphones it's on ipads uh switch all the consoles pc and you can all play with each other and soon just you wait it'll come to uh your alexa (laughs) (laughs) and uh i I just have so many friends spread across like every single platform because i primarily play on pc and uh wouldn't you know it most of my uh irl friends don't fucking play on pc (laughs) So it's just like, oh, cool, I have Borderlands 3, but I can't play it with you. My bad. So I think, I think just having that normalized, and it, it's uh, nothing's relatively easy in the programming world, but in, in comparison to like other it things, it's, it's so easy to do. Years of War 5, does mm-hmm. it? Because, you know, it's, cross, it's cross-platform. You can play with and, people and, on And TV. social, yeah. But the you can choose to, play to anywhere. do that. Yes, the uh, console players can opt out. You're to do it. I yeah. think that's what games need to do to make crossplay more a thing. Because if mm-hmm. you can choose to opt out of it, you don't have to like deal about getting like super quick scope from someone on PC who has like a mouse and a key. I, I'm that board. asshole on Gears Five, by the way. I, I can't snipe for shit with a controller, but on PC, I'm like, ooh, left and right, give me that bull talk. <laughs> like, I mean, you just I gotta think- click their heads, man. You just. <laughs> <laughs> Because I like that option because that means like, to me, I think that means we're closer to crossplay because if we can have the option of you turning on if you want to play with other like console slash PC people, I think that means that we're slowly getting to that point where it won't be like, oh shit, can't play with people on on PC or on the Xbox. Literally when you can play with people on Apex on the fucking Switch. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What? I think um, Switch. <laughs> I think even outside like the realm of shooters, where obviously PC has a bit of an advantage, even though um, uh, the Halo MCC collection on a PC, I would argue that aside from like the uh, snipers, that because the aim assist on the controllers, controller people actually have a little bit of an advantage because the uh, TTK, the uh, time to kill, is so much higher. Um, but like games like. Uh, Fuck, what's the name? Uh, Fall Guys. Like, there's no reason that can't be crossplay. That That's just a Sony thing. Yeah. I mean, I think they are working on that, though. I think that uh, that's that's one thing that they're trying to get because it's on PC as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. This, this next bit of news is, is probably going to get uh, Sarah excited. Um, so I think it was earlier last week, um, Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 actually got re- re-released onto, not Steam, on, uh, on GOG. 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 They, um, mm-hmm. they, they aren't like the HD releases from, um, that came out on the PS3 and 360, but it's, it's still nice to have them available there to play. And then this week, um, Silent Hill 4 is now on PC. Uh, the one thing that I, that point out about the Silent Hill 4 one was there were actually translation fixes to it. They were very subtle, but people realized that some that some dialogue was translated a little bit better and the grammar was fixed up a little bit. So there is actually changes happening to these ports. They're very minute, but oh my god, please fucking play Silent Hill 4. Like, I get that people hear about it and like, oh, this game sucked. It's the one that I have not played. It's the best soundtracks in one of in like Silent Hill history. And two, Silent Hill 4 is really fucking creepy. And if you're and you are missing out if you are not giving it. Yeah, I, I it, was probably, like... it was probably it was probably because I'm I'm right there with you. I will go on I will go on the books, Sarah, and say I'm if not the one of the biggest Silent Hill fans out there because I know everything there is to know about Silent Hill. Um and Silent Hill 4 was scary as hell. It was probably one of the last really good 
or decently good Silent Hill games that were created. And the one thing, so one thing about the Metal Gear Solid thing that's very interesting is a couple days before this, I can't remember the guy's name, but a prominent YouTube, he does like graphic card leaks and stuff. He supposedly said that, and I don't, like I said, take this for a grain of salt, but notice that this happened four days after that, that supposedly there is a remake of Metal Gear Solid happening and it's to release on PS5 and PC. And four days later, Konami comes out of nowhere, literally out of permanent hibernation, because are they even a video game company any anymore? No one knows. And, and are just <laughs> like, hey guys, here's Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 and a couple of the old Metal Gear games on good old games, literally out of nowhere. Well, there's been some rumors about a, yet another uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, 1 remake, as well as uh, Silent Hill. Stakes, you monsters! Like, Don't play it. I mean, I mean, the cutscenes are funny. Like, you see Snake, like, doing a backflip, jumping off an Akita missile in, like, the I most over-the-top anime it. style Even possible. Alone. Yeah. yeah. All I'm saying is, um, Twin Snakes gets passed for me once you realize, once you rationalize it as, um, Raiden doing a VR mission of Metal Gear Solid 1. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I can, I can buy that. makes complete sense. Um, I need to replay it now. So and and I I heard I heard this somewhere, but I, I think they also said that the reason they didn't release um, Silent Hill like two and three or whatever, uh, and just Silent Hill four uh, out of the whole like out of all the Silent Hills they could have released on GOG. Yeah, it's very they, interesting that they released yeah four. they they released four. I think I heard something along the lines of like they they lost the original source code to yeah. the I, to, actually. I actually talked to um, one of the producers and uh, some other people in the community on uh, Twitter a little while ago. Um, so what essentially what happened with the HD collection that had two and three in it was Konami contracted, um, uh, what was it, Hijink Studios, I think, to um, to just go ahead and do a remaster of it. They said, okay, sure, but Konami, handed, they lost the source code for two and three. Mm -hmm. They gave them an incomplete one that's full of bugs, full of glitches. It's it's incomplete. So they had to rebuild it from there. Uh, there were some budgetary issues. There were some producer issues that uh, Tom Hewlett had to deal with. And um, so b that development company really got the short end of the stick. And, and one of the criticisms is that uh, companies like Bluepoint, which did the HD remasters of Shadow of the Colossus, um, Eco... I wouldn't um, for, exactly call them a remaster. I would call that a remake, especially. No, Shadow they they did a remaster beforehand on PS3. Oh no, yeah, I knew they that. Did the PS3 no, they also did a crazy, crazy good re remake of it. Yeah, but um, so what they would do for those games specifically, they would just take a off the shelf retail version of the disc and whatever proprietary tech, whatever technology they have. That's how they get the source code. That's how they do the remaster versus uh, trying to f track down the actual source code and whatever. Uh, file file folder they have back at konami hq mm -hmm. um so that development studio so really got the short end of the stick and that's what makes it so hard to get two and three onto modern ha hardware because it's just been lost to time and they're too uh stubborn to just grab a ps2 copy off the shelf and just let uh blue point do it well see yeah. that just makes makes me sad because when they did kingdom hearts 1.5 if i remember correctly square lost the source code to kingdom hearts 1 so they literally replayed Kingdom Hearts 1, like developers replayed Kingdom Hearts 1 and remade it as they were playing it. Yeah. So it's like, if, if fucking they can do that, what the fuck? It, it honestly... Garbage. Yeah, <laughs> no, Konami, Konami just... Like, Konami does not care. Let, I just, I, I want to say this much, is Konami hard. does not care about video games. The, all they care about is their bottom line, what will make them the most money. And there's too stubborn and too idiotic to realize that uh you know video games is a very frugal business and they're choosing to make pachinko machines so you know is this the redemption <laughs> arc though trying to get back into the in the favor no, of gamers no no i think, no. I think konami's way too far from a from like a literal re redemption arc if they I, had any self-respect at all, they would just release the IPs to companies that actually want to make the game. Yes, yeah, sell them to Sony. Let them let them get Metal Gear. Let them get uh, Silent Hills. Yeah. So. 
I mean, the Xbox only... has the medium coming out, and that's basically a silent. It is. Game. I'm so excited for that game. I am yeah, so excited for that game. No good doing half the music. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. <laughs> like, it's it just it's sad to see. Because, of course, people see them re-releasing Sound Hill 4, and they're like, oh, hey, Sound Hill's coming back. We're going to get 2 and 3 someday, now that we have 4. They I doubt it. They literally only did this no. because they were like, oh, we have the source code for this. We have the PC port of this. We mm -hmm. just go ahead and fix some of the translation. It's, it's easy money for them. Drop the game for a pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. it's, it's only $9.99. I legitimately just bought it before this show. And drop it on a platform that everybody loves. Like, I have never heard of someone who hates GOG. No one really hates GOG. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a good fucking pla platform. It's a good platform to drop old games like Cyberpunk. I will, I will um, admit I have not heard of GOG until, like, a few days ago when they dropped Silent really? Hill 4. Yeah, I've never heard yeah. of it till now. Oh, well. Fun fact, um, I don't know if you know this, but it's owned and it's developed by a CD Projekt Red. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know who yeah, they are. It's, yeah. like, it's like their own... Literally, they made that service because some of their development team was like, we want to play 90s PC games. Why don't we let everybody play them? And literally, that's what they, that's why they made it. Yeah. For sure. So Because so, literally, GOG was made for old PC games. For sure. So, so people could re-download old PC games and buy old PC, PC games and play them. And mm -hmm. that's why... Uh, Macy. Got something. So... Mace, I know this uh, next one's a little near and dear to you. Uh, DMC5 is uh, the special edition, specifically, is not coming to PC. Does that upset yeah. your spaghetti? I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I get it. Like, um, because so, so, like, so, 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 Virgil's going to be DLC on the, the regular version. But the, the things that aren't coming, like the, like the legendary Dark Knight mode, Turbo mode, um, the ray tracing that 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 they were redoing all the lighting with um, is not coming to pre to PC at all, which really sucks. Despite the fact that a lot of that stuff is just in the source code, not the ray tracing, but like the legendary Dark Knight and the Turbo mode, that stuff is literally an off toggle right. in like the INI files. So, I mean, you're gonna have hackers probably going yeah, into the source code. Going to totally mod it in. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's, it still sucks that they're just. Yeah. Like... I mean, I got DMC5 for like 20 bucks because I originally played it on uh, Game Pass and I, I, sw I swiped it for 20 bucks on PS4. So I'm not too heartbroken buying it again for 40 on uh, the PS5. But but yeah, oh, I just so they're, they're not going to do like a free upgrade thing. Or... I don't know. No. No. So yeah. it's like, special edition. So. Yeah. Uh, so when so the Devil May Cry special editions, they're sort of like the the Kingdom Hearts final mixes. Oh, okay. So like they they always add a, another playable char character. They always add an extra mode. They sometimes add extra cutscenes to it. So like the DMC three special edition added Virgil and his old storyline. DMC four added. Virgil, Lady, and, and and Trish, even though Lady and Trish kind of played like Garbo. Controversial, controversial opinion. I think Virgil plays like shit. I don't like playing as him whatsoever. Well, I mean, they're yeah, probably going to make it better for... That's very controversial. Uh, they're, they're, <laughs> I mean, I bet he's going to... I have a feeling he's going to play like like smooth as butter in, in, in 5 just from watching the gameplay and how five plays in general, <laughs> I'm not worried. <laughs> right. I'm like, Virgil's gonna, my only worry though, and I was talking to a friend about this, is on a recent live stream, Matt Walker, who is the pr producer, mentioned that there was gonna be 10 plus hours of Virgil game gameplay. That makes me wonder how much of the story, like how much of the camp campaign's gonna be different that adds 10 plus hours, because from that trailer, uh, there were two cutscenes they showed in that trailer that were not in the original game, and I'm like, I know this, I beat the game like five fucking times, I know they were in there. There's the opening cutscene from his perspective of when Virgil, uh, of when uh, Nero is in the garage, that was not in the original game, and one of the epilogue cutscenes. I will, I, I will so, say this much, I, when I played DMC5, it did feel like there were, there were fragments of the game, or the story missing. I didn't feel like when I finished it, I felt like I wasn't getting the full story. Like there was more to be explored. Um, 
so you may be you may be right you know well because honestly i mean you three can jump in because i'm like i will scream about death may cry until the ends of the earth but i'm in a podcast that's two other people who are super into it as much as i am so it's like please but it's like i feel like they wouldn't have shown those two specific cutscenes mm-hmm. if they weren't going to add something more or my yeah. my little dumb dumb break my heart hopes that they add more to that epilogue because i demand to see Dante and virgil acting like actual brothers Oh, and not trying to kill one another. If that's if that's the case, if what you say is true, I'm I'm definitely gonna have to drop some money and and get the special oh, edition. It is it is a day one PS5 purchase for me. <laughs> like also, it's one of also, my launch titles. Um, I really, really, really hope because they haven't shown it yet. I really, really hope that Virgil doesn't just have the Yamato. I really hope he has like Beowulf or or. Or uh, he doesn't need to have Force Edge. Force Edge was a fun was a fun little reference, but mm-hmm. we, we he he can leave that one at home. Uh, well, I mean, but, they're kind of already breaking lore with his uh with his fucking devil trigger. True. <laughs> Where he just turns into V. It's a V. He turns yeah. Into v. Yeah. <laughs> I saw mm-hmm. that. I pointed at my screen like Leonardo DiCaprio style. And I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> well, I was like, um, I don't know how this works. I need I need the show you Ruppas. I need I need the I need the moon salts. I need, I need those things that only Virgil does, so... Um, I also... Would, especially if he seems so big and so, like, polished, they would. Yeah. I, I'm I also, uh, I just haven't seen it yet. I'm not... I hope I'm not the only one who, like, literally, uh, listened on repeat Devil Trigger after that game Oh, uh, dude, Devil Trigger, out. and a, a shout-out to Blaine and SDGC. She, um... I've, I've been listening to fucking... What's it called? Uh, you know, let me pull up my Amazon Music. It's fucking Virgil's theme. Fuck, I have it uh, on my Harry, phone right Harry now. The light, which yes. is nine I, fucking minutes long. I've been listening and to that on, on repeat. It is nine minutes. It tells the story of Virgil V and Yurzen. I've been oh, listening to that on repeat for like three character. fucking days straight. Thank you, Blaine. That makes sense. It is, <laughs> that makes sense. It is nuts. Like, the music in that game is some of the best video game music I've heard in a super long time. Like, Hate Me? You sure Hate Me? I think Subhuman kicks so much ass. And... It's not my favorite track in that in that game, but it kicks a lot of butt. But Bury the Light fucking just shot up to my favorite track yeah. in that whole game. It has That's some so of the most fucking emo good. fucking lines that I've ever heard. It has some video ever. game ass fucking lyrics. One in of it. the fucking lines is my family crest is the demon of death. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I need to replay the game. I, can I honestly feel the only edge. played it once, but I need to replay it. <laughs> oh, it's oh, Devil Cry Five is so good. Like, it is. It is. No it's good as it is. I just I, every time I need to get some rage out or just feel angsty again, I just I play that game. <laughs> it's uh. oh, Virgil fight was so good. Like just just the way that it wraps up the first three games and four is just so fucking good. And this whole this whole year, I was like, where the fuck is the special edition? I had friends telling me, you know, it's coming. It's coming, and I'm like, but where the fuck is it? When is the special edition coming out? By the way, uh, it's uh, launch day. PS5. Day one PS5. Yep. Yes. And Xbox, oh, excellent. Yeah. I'll probably excellent. be playing and Demon Xbox, Souls yeah. and then it, it is, um, but it's specifically Miles. But th- that'll be a third for me. Launch title. Mm-hmm. It's True. just like I just I just I love Devil May Cry so much. Also, <laughs> uh, so also, I, 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 Vir- um, Virgil. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mesa. I saw something that's fun. Uh, 120 FPS in 1080p. Yes. I don't think you know. Just most people. Just a little. Just a little. I don't think most. I don't think most people even have a 120 hertz um, TV though. I know. I sure as fuck don't. I have a 144 monitor. I have to double check my TV, but I'm I, I my TV is only two years old, and it's a. I have like a what is it? It's like a 55 inch 4K QLED QLED smart tv something like that i mean my tv was able to run god of war at 60 fps so and it's running vermintide at 60 i think that's running on the series X, or the yeah. one x I, I don't have a series yeah, I, 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 I just I don't think one, i just don't think uh 120 uh hertz tvs are widespread unless you're willing to spend the money on uh on them Actually, yeah, I, I, I was i think I, I, I saw some like some Samsung ones that are like 55 and Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. It's I know, becoming I know, more common. I know Virgil's cool and everything, but we got to talk about the real uh, VIP of the week, oh, though. 
let's talk about my boy Steve. No. <laughs> I knew. I knew this. <laughs> Don't forget uh, that Travis touchdown okay. is a fucking me fighter. I don't personally, <laughs> I do not personally Perfect care world. about Minecraft I, I, or, or okay. Steve. Listen, but my nephews are freaking the fuck Steve. out. Let's talk about Travis is kind of in Smash, and it's about time. And my weird summoning. But, but Steve over. is an official new character. He's not just a skin over a fucking sword fighter. I don't Steve care. Steve has his Steve. own move set, and my nephews are fucking but, happy. But 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 Sarah, you can play as an Enderman. I don't Yeah. <laughs> he, he traps Snake in his cardboard box. He can't move anymore. What about what about what about Cube Kirby? Cube 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 Kirby is adorable. Cube he's Kirby's a square, worth dude. It. Cube Kirby is worth He's just he's everything. just a box. He's just a box with little feet. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, Jose, gonna push you aside. Uh, also, uh, so Travis Dalshan from. No More Heroes has been teased to be in Smash for literally like a couple months now. Like someone asked Suda51, is Travis going to be in Smash? And Suda legitimately replied with, old, like, was like, I think he said, in like intense no comment or like, or there's something like that. And then our boy gets announced and he's a me fighter. And Aww. I was like, I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm giving up. That's the frustrating thing, is they're like, we're not going to put the fighter in there, but here's a skin of them for your me. Like, like Mesa mentioned, fans are trying to see it as Travis would fucking love this. Like, he's like, oh my god, I'm actually in Smash, even though I'm not an actual character. So that's what I'm trying to go by. I'm telling myself, like, oh, Travis would love this. He'd be so happy. Travis but then a part of me is, like, still so mad. Travis is such a loser. This is what he deserves. All right. You're so. Big. All right. Like, like, don't, don't, like we know that he's a loser, but leave the boy alone. <laughs> He'd probably like, be happy about it. All I'm saying is, is that I, I will. Travis freaking out. Like, I finally in Smash. I won't be satisfied till we either get Sora or Dante in Smash. Bless you. I... Bless you. <laughs> I just want Sora. Uh, that would be so good. Like, but, uh, I, I really want. I, I would say I Sora really over Dante and Smash just because Kingdom Hearts has more of a history with Nintendo. And he could it? be like a mixture okay, between a sword, sword fighter. He, he, he's a mix between a sword fighter and a mage because he like he'll transform into his different like forms. You know. Yeah. Also, it just, if, it, it if it's great. if it's indicative, how little. Uh, Devil May Cry means to Nintendo. The first Devil May Cry game to come to a Nintendo console was Devil May Cry 2. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Not that's one, rough. not three. It was two. Wait, no, that's wait, rough. wait, wait. When, was, when did two... Because one was the first one on Switch. No, it was definitely two, I remember, because people are like, seriously, what the fuck? No, I'm, I'm okay. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm misremembering, but I'm pretty sure... <laughs> Objection. One was the... Because it, it basically gave us the HD collection in piecemeal over time. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was two. So while Mace is uh, checking to see if I'm full of shit or not, uh, <laughs> let's talk about someone who we know is full of shit. Uh, WB Games has responded to J.K. Ooh. Rowling's whole controversy thing with the did W they? Games. Pr mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they did. <laughs> uh, yeah. They dead ass did. One? Was it uh, one? Was it one? Sadly. Uh, D w Games <laughs> president uh, came out and said that J.K. Rowling has the right to hold her opinions and I, I just have to come out and say like that's that's like the most fucking milk toast way you can come off is saying just like we're contractually obligated to not slam her but when it when it comes to um the lgbt community when it comes to racism when it comes to anything that in that whole ballpark I, it's it's not an opinion it's like if you're speaking against or discriminating against people you can go fuck yourself I yeah. don't care if there's yeah. money on the line. You come out and say fuck that person. Like you can say, we're, 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 an opinion. An opinion is like uh, is like someone saying, um, you know, I'm gross for liking pineapple on my pizza. That's that's an opinion. That's that's an opinion. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the right opinion. Hey, hey, you shut up. <laughs> but, but like legitimately hating a group of people is not an opinion. That's no, just it's being not. a fucking asshole. It's like, true, like yeah. if they come out and say fuck J.K. Rowling and then just say like, yeah, but we're still going to make the game. We we need to put food on the table for the devs. Like, yeah, fine, whatever. But fuck J.K. Rowling. Just come out and at least have the decency to say that. Well, and also, I, I said this to you the other day, Jose, is that it, it, 
the thing that the that they're missing is that by them saying, "Oh, you know what? We don't we don't excuse me. We don't agree with her opinion. We don't share her views, but she's entitled to her opinion." What they're missing is the fact that her opinion is fucking awful and it fucking exactly. spreads big yes. she opinion. has she has freedom of speech she totally is practicing that right of freedom of speech but she is not she shouldn't be immune to the consequences of the shit that she's saying and producing no you know and, it, sorry continue and, and on some level i understand they make a fuck ton of money uh from the wizarding world and harry potter everything because she has a freaking theme park like we get it but on some level they have to have some sort of contractual power over her to pull back the reins right. and tell her to shut her mouth because on a business standpoint that doesn't look good on on not on not just on her because she can go in a dumpster fire and burn for all i care but it doesn't look good on WB, no matter what stance they take, other than condemning her words. You know, and I, just... I think I think even people coming out saying like, "Oh, well, you can't just boycott the game." What about the what about the devs behind it? They worked really hard on that. And what I'm and my from my perspective, it's they got paychecks to make the game for if it, if it was, it was in development for three years, they got three years of paychecks. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day. Um, gaslighting about is, is pushing the blame away from the person who caused the fucking issue, which is J.K. Rowling. You can't blame people getting pissed off. You have to blame the person who like, fucking caused know, the fire. We don't know if because like I, I don't know about how games and selling games work. So please don't like attack me. But we don't know if the developers are also getting a cut of how many copies are sold. Because mm -hmm. I know sometimes that happens. Yeah. Like we don't know if that's mostly it's the higher ups. Okay. Mo mostly, it's, thank you. Because, it, like I said, I honestly, I don't know. Mostly, I don't know it's 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 usually um, like the directors and the producers that that get uh, yeah. royalties. Um, uh, uh, Gearbox, Gearbox, the the employee do get a do get a cut. But yeah, for most, for I most, remember um, that. But for most uh, developers, unless it's like a, I hope it's not like a. Uh, you know the famous um, uh, Fallout New Vegas situation of you miss this Metacritic so you don't get a bonus. Oh no! Oh uh, god, I remember that. But it's also on on the development team on the stupid Harry Harry Potter game. I can't imagine how they must have felt because apparently this game has been in development for like five or so years, and then to have her come out with those comments and them just being mm -hmm. like, "Oh shit!" Like we have poured our heart and souls in into this, and now all of a sudden. Like, well, also, now, I can't, I, mean, I can't I'm imagine, sure. I can't imagine how, like, because it, I mean, WB has been, has been open, or at least the people, the, the, the company developing this game have been open and honest about how they, um, they have trans people on their, on mm -hmm. their staff. And I can't even imagine how they must feel yeah. because I, I just, yeah, I don't, I, I, I can't even. I talk this before it's just garbage in all around aspects of it mm -hmm. it's just garbage and even if it's kind of well, like talking about the development team and people on on the development team it's sad garbage and then it's also like hatred garbage like it's just mm -hmm. garbage like this whole this whole situation this whole thing this whole like game it's it's just it's bad mm -hmm. and it's just it's sad also like just like thinking about those developers thinking of those lgbtq plus members on that team just it's all sad and it's just right. like watching this because uh context i'm not into harry potter i was never into it as a kid i have friends who that was like before all this happened, I would make a yearly trip to Universal with one of one of my best friends, and we, we would spend like three hours in in the Wizarding World just because it was her thing. Mm -hmm. And I love I like to to see her happy because she's my friend, so we would hang out there. But it's just like now seeing them just being like, what the fuck? Like now my yeah. childhood, everything that I loved as a kid, and now the actors are coming out and defending her. It's just a whole fucking mess, and it's a yeah, sad mess. 
It and, and 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 that's the thing is I don't think the actors are are necessarily quote unquote defending her. I think they're taking the fence sitting approach, which is like uh the things th- this is basically what it is. It's like, oh, the things that she says is horrible, but uh don't let her horrible words and actions ruin something <clears throat> that's close to close and near and dear to your heart. Which if it was for any other reason, I would I would I would say, okay, sure, but this is about this is about human rights. This is about yeah. mm-hmm. people having a voice and I think, yeah. I think Daniel Radcliffe was like the one that was like she shouldn't be saying these things. She should, like you know, I think Daniel Radcliffe was the one. And everyone else, like Eddie Redmayne and other people were like <clears throat> doing the milk toast response. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel Daniel was pretty straight up about it, I I feel. And he was appealing I think he was appealing more to like the emotional side of fans and he understands mm-hmm. how they must be feeling right now. Um so I'll give him that much at least, yeah. I think he said something like your like her characters wouldn't be saying the things she was saying or something like that. Yeah. No, it's true. Uh she even created though even though Harry she cre- Potter has like histories of like slight oh. of, like racism and like yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like like shitty stuff that people didn't see as kids who now read it as adults and they're like, ooh. Yeah. Like that's not good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that so, yeah. that ain't hot. All around dumpster so, fire. <laughs> yeah. Things Did are like great, yeah. Jose, where's he at? Uh oh, Jose. Jose? Oh shit, do we have to run this ourselves? Uh, uh, we're gonna talk about, uh, uh Devil May Cry 5. Uh, the last 20 bread, bread and butter, bread and butter, bread and butter, peas and carrots, peas and carrots. Uh, uh, so, uh punch. Heavy punch. Is this, is this now a Kingdom Hearts pod, podcast? Have we, so have we taken it I, over? I have the list here if we want to move down the line. Sure, let's do it. <laughs> let's because see. we have, uh, eight minutes. Yeah. What can we so, talk about in eight minutes? So let's talk about the. We can skip past some of this other stuff for now. Um, let's talk about the CG Resident Evil series, Infinite Darkness, coming out. That Netflix Portugal just came out of nowhere and was just like, <laughs> hey, Resident Evil show. Like, it's not a movie, y'all. It's a literal show. I didn't realize that my mic was off. My bad. <laughs> ah, welcome back to the conversation. I, talking I was, about I, Resident Evil. I was, like, I was like, damn, Corey's ignoring me. He hates me. <laughs> Resident Evil again. Um, <laughs> real quick, Mesa, did you find out if I was full of shit? Yes, you were. Oh, fuck hey off. <laughs> <laughs> was it DMC1 first? Yep, DMC1, and then like three months later, DMC2. Oh, fuck me. God damn it. Okay, go on, like Corey. Six months later. <laughs> so, yeah, um, moving on to more news. Uh, we're talking about the animated uh, series, which took me by surprise because I, I, I'm I familiar with the CG movies that, that have come out in the past of Resident Evil, and this just looked like another, you know, albeit exciting, um, just another CG Resident Evil movie. But it's a show. Yes. So it is confirmed to be... A CGI show, and Netflix has the rights to. But Netflix also didn't they say they're also planning on making a, a live yes. action show? So yes. okay, this is cool. This is really good news. <laughs> so, so for those who don't know, the there's two Resident Evil movies. There's the shitty Paul W S Anderson. Two uh, of them are very good cheese fests. Yes, the first uh, one especially. I, I will argue yeah. that Apocalypse, which is basically a retelling of. Resident Evil 3 yeah. and also gave us Oda Fear as a Carlos, which is my favorite casting of all time. I, I would say uh, two is, and, and is five is fine. Apocalypse good. is fine. Now there is the CGI films, which are legitimate canon. So mm-hmm. the there's three CGI films, mm-hmm. uh, which in order take place between Resident Evil 4 and 5, Resident Evil 5 and 6, and 6 and 7. Quick I, don't, I don't remember the names off the top of my head. Which which movie um, is it where Chris is in like that stupid gun fight with a dude? They're running in circles, that, shooting each other. That's Vendetta. That one takes place between six and seven. I need to watch that because uh, that scene is so beautiful. Yeah, so it is. We don't know. Yeah. You know what, I'm so going to throw it up know. on the screen. My favorite story of I saw Vendetta in theaters, and my favorite thing was me and my friend were sitting there, and this really fancy dressed Japanese business guy walks in, has like a briefcase and everything just sits himself down and has this thing of pot, uh, popcorn 
and it's just pointing at the screen almost all the time and like getting so excited over it and it made me very happy but um yeah but so uh <laughs> so this new one coming out we know literally no details about it just that it's the show starting in 2021 it is confirmed to be a part of the cgi timeline we just don't know what what games it takes place in if it even does that Mm -hmm. So there's context clues that we can guess. Uh, it obviously takes place after six because from the rumors that have come out, Leon's at the White House for a funeral. For those who have played six, Leon kills the president of the United States. So he was a zombie president. Well, yeah, zombie president. But we can guess that Leon's there for the president's funeral in six, which means it could take place after six because, you know, in six, literally half the world blew up. <laughs> and then seven kind of forgot about it. Yeah. So if... If I had to make a sound guess as a huge Resident Evil person, and I am too into Resident Evil lore, like, it's kind of nuts. If I had to take a guess, I think this might take place between 7 and 8. Which obviously is, mm -hmm. is an easy guess, because you're like, oh, it's going to take, take place between 6 and 7. Well, it's, what has been released from it has shown Claire walking into a house that looks like the old Baker house from Resident Evil 7. And Leon's at the White House after the president, you know, gets shot and and. and but that's dead. but that's weird because the Baker House, spoilers for anyone who hasn't played Resident Evil Seven, the Baker House got destroyed at the end. See that, a part of me would totally be behind that, but with how much the game was like, don't trust White Umbrella. A part of me makes me feel like either it, they did some fucked up shit where they like recreated everything. Or I, I remember people being so thrown off specifically because, you know, they have Umbrella in the helicopter, and then it was also Chris did not look like fucking Chris. He did not look like Boulder Boy. Mm. He looked like beautiful Chris. Suppose yeah. The reason why Looks they like did that, Rory which is a, yeah, which is a dumbass argument, is they claim they wanted Chris to look more like an actual person. Yeah. There are dudes that are built like Chris. It wasn't Resident Evil 5. Like, Give me the Boulder Boy, like dude. That exists. Mm -hmm. So it's like... What I think is happening is, and this is just Resident Evil fans speculating here, is Chris reaches out to Claire, says like, hey, this umbrella that I'm working for is super fucking sketchy. If I go, if I did disappear off the face of the earth, this is why something happens. He, he disappears because maybe he goes rogue at eight. He shoots fucking Mia in the beginning of eight. Claire goes after him. It leads her to where the Baker estate was. And something happens and she finds Leon. I, I don't I would think... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just think they would be dumb not to set this between 7 and 8. Because something huge has to happen between 7 and 8 to make Chris literally go kind of rogue. I don't mm -hmm. believe for a second that Chris is going to be a villain in 8. I think it's just, uh, they don't have the context for it, whether it's Mia or oh, it's a Mia. fake Mia. I, I, don't, I don't think for a second they're going to seriously go down like a Chris is evil storyline. I yeah, think they're... he's evil, but I think he kills Mia. Like, let's just be honest. That Dude, she dies, coming. like, fucking five <laughs> times in seven. Yeah. That bitch I... had it coming. Like, me is... I, I didn't trust her as far, as far as I could throw her. I still don't trust her as far as I could throw her. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised Ethan Suggler was just like, look, I, we're cool, but, uh... Dude, I'm gonna have some PTSD gone... from this. Uh, this this is my, my biggest gripe with Resident Evil 7. You lost your wife three years ago. You haven't moved on since then. I just... <laughs> Any normal person <laughs> would not go searching in bumfuck Egypt for her. You know. Excuse you. Foul. That's bumfuck in the bayou. <laughs> There's Take alligators the there, dude. I don't want to deal with no alligators. Fuck that. <laughs> out of out of Even. a single email, out of a single like one line email. Like, oh, better go to freaking the bayou in the backwoods of Louisiana. Old look, look. muscle car. <laughs> yeah. All, all I'm saying he calls is. calls a random friend where he's like, I don't know, man, I think me is alive. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, okay, if you break down the plot of Resident Evil 7, it's not good. <laughs> no. Look, all, all, I'm say, all, I'm, all I'm saying about ditching, about ditching Mia. Me and my girlfriend are huge horror movie buffs. I'm pretty sure she would understand if she went missing in that area. If I just said, nah, I'm good, I'm sure she would understand. She'd be dead. She'd <laughs> be cool with it. It's a Resident Evil game. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's Resident Evil. Bring back the Tic Tacs yeah. for health, dude. Hell yeah, dude. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Bring back the glass phones. Come they weren't, on. They weren't Tic Tacs. They were just like... Hi, uh, like uh, dehy yeah, he dehydrated herbs in pill form, <laughs> in tic tac format. 
Yeah. <laughs> the the most uncomfortable phones. They look like they give you hand cramps. Yeah. <laughs> oh oh shout real real quick shout out to uh to our boy Justin from uh, SDGC for uh tunneling through Resident Evil 6 cuz he's 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 kind of updating the community as he goes through he's like oh my god am I seriously fighting a fucking shark under this cave or whatever I'm just like yes. ooh yes, you boy are. Yes, you are. I'm like oh boy wait till you see the fucking T-Rex and by the way oh. here's this uh Jurassic Park uh, oh my god it's a fucking dinosaur song to compliment it as you get there <laughs> Does everybody forget the fact oh. that you had to run away from sharks in Resident Evil 1? Yeah. And you had to fight a giant plant as well? Mm-hmm. It's like, not a dinosaur, though. My favorite. But I mean, I like, we had Dino stuff. Crisis around that time, too. So it wasn't exactly out of the ordinary. But you also <laughs> fought a dinosaur in Parasite Eve. In the yeah, so it's like, it's area. not an unknown concept. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like the politician that turns into the giant meat dog that runs on the train tracks. Yeah, it's the same dude. He transforms, in, he, dude. He transforms into yeah, a giant dog. Transforms into that. a dinosaur. He transforms into a giant fucking Jeff Goldblum fly. That's right. Yeah, he goes so through bad. so many things. Oh, God. Why'd you have to reference the fly? <laughs> All right, we're, we I have think... hit. We have hit the two-hour mark. Does anyone have any last things they would like to touch upon? <laughs> Oh man, I we think didn't even get it. to like some of the other news stories, but that, that'll just be for next time. <laughs> Putting my hopes in the next gen switch into the universe. Oh, we didn't even hit that 4K <laughs> switch. Universe. Yeah, next year. All uh, I'm saying is, I, th- I did the math. Um, an Ampere, the most recent architecture for NVIDIA version of the switch, would be about a Xbox Series S in performance. Oh wow! wow. Plus, yeah, and that thing's gonna I- burn your hands off when you're playing it. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Which is, and then. Um, the Ampere is actually very energy efficient. Um, and plus, with tensor cores, in order to use DLSS, it'll be able to keep up with the next gen. That's all I have to say. Yeah. That's all I'm putting Finally, in, like, energy up into the air. Finally, Nintendo is catching up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they're probably not going to do it because they're Nintendo, yeah. but... Yeah, no. Yeah. <sighs> all right, well, this <laughs> was... Fu- or, out. I'm sorry. Sorry, did you have any last words that are not uh, Kingdom Hearts related? Ouch. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I need to stop doing that joke. I need to find some new material. And I, and, I lo- and I love DMC too much to talk shit, even facetiously. Well, I mean, the most I can say is uh, play Devil May Cry 5 and uh, listen to Caro Caro Bonito's Bug Snack song. Yeah, Lis- listen to uh, Buried in the Light. Please, DMC. please listen to Bug Snacks. Thank you, thank you, Blaine. <laughs> Shout out to Blaine, MVP of the week. Um, I will say my last my last words is that um, uh, it, within these next two months, we're definitely going to have a lot, a lot more, a lot more things to talk about with experience, too. So that's going to be yeah. exciting. We have a lot to look forward to. So I'm, I'm stoked. Uh, I, I, I guess my last comment would be uh, for the love of God, fucking play Yakuza. If you haven't start with zero, <laughs> you, you fucking owe it to yourself as a, as a human being. I think they're all on Game Pass. You're gonna hit. Are you gonna uh, hit zero and two and three? Oh, not not three. Uh, judgment. I uh, I think I'll play seven before I hit Judgment. I'll probably uh, wind my way back really? around to it. Okay. Uh, anyone want to shout out their socials? I know your ats are on screen, but uh, follow am... me on my Twitter so I can talk about my uh, <laughs> talk about my uh, dating sim boy and, Yakuza lawyer boyfriend and Bones Malone. <laughs> And Bones, and, and follow the adventures of Bones, Malone, and Sarah as they travel through uh, the Diablo w- w- wasteland. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts is a good series, I'm sorry. Bless you. <laughs> Corey, <laughs> shout out your uh, socials. Uh, I am a Celtic Scribe, or uh, King Celtic, as some of people call me. Um, I am also on Twitch. I stream, uh, not really on any set days, but I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, pretty much all those things. I have a a discord as well if you want to if you want to talk to me there um i do a lot of writing um related and creative related streams so if you guys want to hang out and chill with me and have some fun times with music in the background and, and get creative and actually work on stuff then that's the place mesa you want to go and shout out your stuff yeah um so you can find me at remless i'm on uh youtube as video game rem um I, I, I um, the, all of it's pretty vacant right now, just because I haven't really had the time in order to upload much. 
I'm um, trying to trying to build that up so I can um, put more stuff out there, start streaming again. Uh, follow me for my very good retweets. That's about it. <laughs> F- follow me for puns. I make a lot of them. I make he people does. cry. He does, and sometimes I wake up at like eight thirty or nine in the morning to a pun that he posted on Twitter, and I cringe. My bad. so it's great. It's worth it. No, it's great. It starts my day off with like you know, a punch to the face, and that's what I need. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can follow me at uh, everything on the internet. No one else has the name the Seth Rokage. So if you if you put me in Google, you'll find me. Obviously, already here on my Twitch. Uh, follow me on Twitter, on YouTube. I have that Last of Us video coming out relatively soonish, maybe. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. I'm gonna post a link into the chat for the game session link tree, which has all the links to all of our stuff. And with that, I think we're about done. Yeah. Any that's... final, final, final words? <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, guys. You guys were wonderful. <laughs> We'll see you next time. Yep. Shout out to my cat for not jumping on me. (laughs) 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 All right. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye.